I do believe we are live. I'm going to watch the chat a little bit because the last time we did this, uh, my mic was super quiet. So I'd like to solve that sooner than later. I am waiting to find out if people can hear. Are we live? Are we live? Can you hear me? Mic sounds good. Refresh, it's live. Let's see what happens here. So we can get my dumb face off of this and get into some... Oh, yeah, there I am. Sweet. Let's see what happens here. Okay, am I... Am I am, before we go in, I just want to make sure my mic is good. Riley, to you, do I sound okay? Uh, yeah, it looks... Sounds good to me. Okay. What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Adam from System Era. I am one of the co-founders of the company, uh, as well as one of the artists on there. You may have also seen me on things like Reddit, the Steam forums, things like that. Uh, with me on uh, the stream today is Riley. Uh, he's our audio designer. Uh, he's also responsible for organizing all the music that you hear in the game, which, by the way, I should play in the background here. Let me load that up. Uh, Riley, why don't you go ahead and say hello? Hey, uh, I am Riley. Yeah. Uh, as Adam said, I am the sound designer. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, excited to see some modeling. Yeah. Modeling is one of those things that, and I, and, and I know I've got it on my face right now. I'm trying to just to get some, uh, some things out of the way here really quickly that I probably should have done, uh, beforehand. Riley, where do I find, find that music again? It is in Astroneer. Uh, development. Development audio. audio yeah. Music? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let's get some music on here because my voice is not going to keep you guys entertained for too long. Uh, play Windows Media Player. There it is. That's a, that's a good little background. Music from the game. And this is music by Rutger, right? This is all uh, uh, Rutger's... Rutger Zoidevelt. Zoidevelt? Uh, Dutch artist? Yeah. Yeah, he's been amazing. Uh, and we were, we were pretty satisfied with his, his work immediately, I think it's safe to say. Hmm? Uh, with the audio, uh, people on Twitch, I'll just watch the chat here for a second. Uh, you guys can still hear me okay, even with the music playing, I'm hoping. I'll go a little quieter. How's that? Alright, so, today we are going to be modeling, uh, uh, some stuff for, um, Astroneer. Now, when you guys have played the game... Uh, you have definitely seen some of the things that I'm going to be building today already in the game. It's not the stuff that you're finding deep in the caves. Those are more like historical probes that uh, are from our, our real world. Uh, these are more uh, man-made, uh, by my design, um, space stations that what I'm then going to do is I like to build them intact, get them ready uh, so I can see what they look like when, before they get destroyed. And I'm almost at that stage. We'll kind of wrap... Oh, my mic is shaking. Or my camera is shaking. Uh, get that to a point where I can kind of see what it would look like when it functions. And then we're going to destroy the crap out of it. We're going to get that into the game. And, uh, and uh, we'll have that there for content. And what I'll do is just to sort of should demonstrate that a little bit more. Is I will quickly launch uh, Astroneer. And we will run around and we'll find one of those things that are already in the world. And I can talk a bit more about them. And then we'll jump into 3D Studio Max. And uh, we will start the modeling process. Sounds great, and I'll be here for moral support. Yes, it gets, <laughs> it, gets it gets lonely when I'm modeling, uh, and it would be just a fun to sort of talk because we've had an exciting time since the game has come out. We've got a lot of cool, uh, uh, we've had a lot of cool moments since then. Um, and I, I already see some questions about about this this sort of wreckage stuff. I'm going to talk about that once it's in the game because I think there needs to be a little bit more context there. Um, so I'm just waiting for Steam to launch for me here. I don't know if you guys saw on my my own personal Twitter, but uh, my computer decided to blue screen right before we went live, so I lost a lot of the stuff that I was already running. Okay, I'm going to launch Astroneer super quick. I'm going to mute my music. Okay. And 
And uh, Riley, did you get a chance to uh, blast out the stuff that we are live now? Uh, I did. That's why I was like silent for five minutes because typing and talking is hard. Oh yeah, yeah. So they are out. We'll have more people joining us, and uh, I guess I'll try to cycle through these questions too. Yeah. So I think. Um... One thing I want to talk about is just sort of like what Astroneer is, because there may be some people here that haven't actually uh, played it. You know, maybe it's not just fans of the game already, but people that are interested in it. Um, and, you know, Astroneer is actually, uh, we are a game that's on early access, but we are actually a game that's also pre-alpha. And <clears throat> what that, that means is we're not quite uh, feature complete. Uh, in fact, we're not close to being feature complete. Uh, but also you can expect things like bugs, crashes. Uh, you might lose a save game, which is super annoying that we know that we're going to fix. Um... You know, multiplayer might be a little bit janky, which I, for sure, some of you guys have experienced, especially with, like, flying rovers and all that kind of stuff. Um, and those are things that we're slowly going to to be fixing over time. You know, there's six of us, so we do divide our time between uh, bug fixes and crashes, as well as creating content. And that's what uh, Riley and I are going to be doing here today, is, is working on content. That doesn't mean that we're not working on bugs. Uh, you know, there's a whole part of the other team that is working on that literally now while, while we do the stream. They are focused on bugs. And we've also got a uh, patch lined up again uh, to go out, I think, early uh, next week. That's got, uh, you know, a huge uh, itemized list, especially for those of you playing on Xbox, uh, because Xbox is, is particularly out of date. Um, and uh, Steam's going to see some updates. So, you know, as, as time goes on, as we are able to grow our team with the support that you guys, the financial support that you guys have shown us, uh, then, you know, patches will come a little bit faster. They'll be more substantial. But uh, it's going to be slow to get going. But uh, I think the game is playable and it's fun right now. Um, and uh, just in, in spite of all those kind of hilarious uh, things that can come up. So the only reason I'm jumping in the game right now is I just want to give context to the thing that we are building in Max today. And it's something that I've been noodling on uh not nearly as much as i should be uh as somebody that's focused on content because i've been doing a lot of stuff on social media uh since the game came out so what i wanted to do is quickly land see if we can't find and of course i oh okay there's something that's good i'm just going to run over there really quickly um and just kind of give context to what we're building so if you guys have played astroneer you're very familiar with just the few bits of wreckage that we have on the surface um, and really, these are just the sort of beginning of, of an idea for gameplay that Jacob has um, and is exploring around wreckage. So right now, it's just really art that goes in there. You'll find a couple of things on them. It's random uh, uh, each time, the things that you find. Um, and, you know, in particular, the one I'm looking at right now, this guy here. This one, you can if people bring it back to the base, they can plug it in. Or if they bring a rover uh, out here, they can plug the rover in, in, into there. Uh, which is actually kind of a funny story. Uh, that was never the intention for me to make this thing look like a functioning solar array. So obviously I need to destroy it and mess it up even more. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to build more of these things. And, and this is really just the very first step to a much bigger idea that uh, Jacob's pretty excited for. That we'll, we'll slowly see come into the game. So yes, we're building more of these things. It's going to be kind of more the same of what's there. But it's really for a much bigger idea that we're baby stepping our way into. Sort of like everything else we do. Um... Uh, on Astroneer, and that's just the sort of way we build the game. Uh, I, of course, I'm going to die uh, on my way back, but that's that's okay. That's that's a good opportunity for me to uh, me to close it. All right, I'm going to shut this down, and we're going to get to modeling. So that is what we're going to be building today um, when we when we work on this stuff. So this this you can kind of see if I go over here. This is an older one that I built, and I am reusing some pieces from it for the new one. But you kind of see, this is where the genesis of that solar array came from that we just looked at in the game. So I took this and I destroyed it. And if I fly over here, let me just go ahead and hide everything that's not relevant right now. Let's get some music going, Adam. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if, yeah are, that, you trying, are you trying to say here. my voice is not entertaining enough, man? Well, I mean, just All right. oh, that's add a little more to it. That's, okay, hang on a second here. Let me turn that down. How's this? Is that good? Is that You're going to be a little second behind here, but that's okay. All right, I can, I can listen in. So here's, here's the wrecks that we have in the game already. You've seen this guy. You've seen this guy. And I don't know if this one shows up a lot. Actually, I should try to get this one in the game more because what I love is it's got this huge this huge silhouette. So right, so from a distance, you can kind of see this little thing sticking up. And we've used it a lot in marketing and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I, I never have seen that, actually. Yeah, I, I'm going to you know I'm gonna take a really quick note here just while we're chatting because now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to say, where the hell... Where the hell? Cause <laughs> and did I give this a name? Guy, uh, that guy has been in there for a while too. 
Yeah, this is actually like, the first one. It's supposed to be the OG one. So let me see here. It's called Discovery uh, Station Wreck uh, 01. And then I'm going to do a giant ass question mark because this is how I take my notes. So yeah, let's see actually, it later. That guy was in the original announce trailer. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Somewhere. I don't know where the hell this guy is. And we've got some stuff for him as well that people could be finding. So really, we I think we only have two, which is kind of a shame. So I took I took I took the stuff from this one over here. I broke it apart and uh, made those out of it. And now I've been working on a brand new one where it, I took this from the one that you see over there, um, and I did something different with it. So I, we did this guy. And the way it works, the way that I build these things is I like to mass it out so I can kind of get an idea for the shape of it. Even though you may never see it fully fully put together like this in the game, it's still just a way for me to sort of logically design this thing. Uh, and then off to the side are these sort of little aerospace-y kind of inspired greebles. And I think people that are very privy to aerospace, they're going to look at this and say, you know, I'm placing them in the wrong spots. Maybe I'm misusing them. Which is fine, and that's 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 criticism, and I, and I am aware of those going in. But our sort of approach to when we do things in Astroneer is, uh, does it fulfill the fantasy that we're trying to do? Which is, you know, does it feel like uh, something from aerospace? And if it does, then we're okay with that. Um, if it needs to be more logically sound, and that's the feedback that we get from the players, we can always come back to this stuff. But if we can work really quickly and get stuff in where it feels like it's coming from aerospace inspiration, then I'd rather do that. So you can see here, like I've started decorating it on the sides of this thing. Uh, here's the here you can see the wireframe you can see how how low detail that stuff is um, and uh, and we just started getting it getting it on there so that when I break it apart it's all there and it's nice and nice and functional these could probably be even even lower poly uh, but for now I'm, I'm pretty happy with them um, so where I am at now is I actually I've got this little cupola that I made and I think even if I ungroup it I may have even got the little the little things here to function so we can make them all rotate and stuff like that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually why don't we before oops I lost everything so actually sure do you want to just give a quick like minute rundown of what 3d max is what is yeah it? like it's it's basically Maya yeah so so I don't know what 3D max or Maya is yeah so so um, professionally for the last geez 13 years I've used 3d studio max I think one project in my whole uh, at least my whole, my whole AAA career, we used uh, Maya, but just professional. Excuse me, prof professionally, I've used uh, 3ds Max, and Paul uses uh, 3ds Max, and we are the two artists on Astroneer, so it just makes sense that we continue doing that. Uh, Unreal works great with the files that we export from there; it uses FBX files. Uh, and 3D Studio Max is just a 3D modeling program. It's used in a lot of industries. It's also used in the games industry. And it's just a personal preference at this point. So I like 3D Studio Max. Paul likes it. We can export just fine from it. We can apply materials to it. And that's the program that we use. It's very complicated on the surface. It's got a massive, massive learning curve. In fact, I think there's applications out there that are far easier if you want to get into 3D Studio, or excuse me, get into 3D modeling. Um, but uh, it's the one I've used. I, like I said, I know it's used professionally, so we'll just continue to use it. There is a metric crap ton of stuff in this uh, tool that I never, never, never touch. Um, I use a very small subset of features of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it lets me get by. It lets me do 3D modeling. Uh, what you're seeing in here is just mesh data. So this is just like a 3D object. So if I contain this out, oops, you can see the wireframe. And you can see I've applied colors to it. And I think what's important is as we're working on this is don't pay too much attention to my color choices. Um, this is not going to how it, this is not what it's going to look like when I bring it into Unreal. In fact, it's just going to be gray when I bring it into Unreal. What I'm using the colors for is to differenti differentiate the materials that will eventually get applied to it. So this may not be the sort of peach color when we come in. Um, but that's just letting me know that if I look here really carefully, that this color is different from this color, which is different from this color, and that's all that's important to me when I bring it in. So again, don't get too hung up on the color choices if if uh, if you're if you've got some opinions about that, because um, once we get that in there, we'll go back to using our color base, which we're sort of using on this stuff over here. All right. So I think that's a good rundown of 3D Studio Max. Uh, I think you got it, and I, I'm gonna stop asking questions about 3D Studio Max. So I got made fun of for the my Maya comment. So oh geez, yeah, uh, and it's very it, it, just to re really quickly show you this sort of stuff that we do. You know, we draw shapes really quickly. 
Um, I can interact with them on a vertex level, so I can grab them and move them around like this. I can grab edges, move it around like this. I can grab faces. We could do things like delete faces, grab edges really quickly, drag it out. Uh, oops, scale, which is really nice. So we're going to do a lot of that and uh, go from there. So I think because this guy is so massive, what I want to do for the stream is I want to focus on getting, let's see. I want to, oh geez, I want to focus on getting this in the game. This in the game and destroy it. And, I, and you'll notice it's massive. And I think some of you may be like, okay, that's really detailed, Adam. I thought your game was low poly. And you're right to think that, but if we look at the scale, so there's an Astroneer. This is a little T-Pose. This is a little T-Pose Astroneer right here. If I turn him around, there's the wireframe. So you can see as a player, this would actually be really big in the game. And that's the intention is I want to do a, a bit of an interior on this that you can walk around and pluck those things from, sort of like you can already. And the reason I want to do it with the solar array is I think the solar array will have really fun silhouettes. And that's really important to us so that you can see them from the distance. So the solar arrays will have these big rectangles in the sky, but I also really love this like this ring thing I think would be really cool to kind of come across on its own. And if I can do another version of it where it's sort of the ring plus the array, that, that's kind of a cool shape that you can kind of come across. And you, you can picture it where like, you know, imagine finding it in the ground and it's like that. That's kind of cool. That's, that's pretty cool. So that's what we're going to get at to. Uh, the first thing I need to finish doing is just getting a lot of these greebles on here and these little spacey bits so that it can feel a little bit more complete and then we will start breaking apart so why don't i start doing that and uh riley while, while i'm doing that why don't we talk about a couple things okay let's uh well actually let's see I'm trying to, i'm just skimming through the comments right now there's sure. a lot yeah you have a lot of questions for you um actually well here's one uh from caseman mm -hmm. uh, how much freedom will 3d modelers have when you guys open up steam workshop for astroneer uh, that's a good question. So, um, uh, if you're familiar with Workshop, you may be familiar with a website called Polycount. Uh, and prior to uh, working on System Era, I was actually a uh, owner of Polycount, small owner, but still an owner. And I worked with Drew and Seth on that kind of stuff. And so we we actually helped shepherd a lot of the stuff with Workshop. And I'm very excited about it as a platform for that. So, to answer your question, I want to give as much freedom as it makes sense. Uh, you know, so that content creators can create the content for that uh, whether or not we monetize it I have no idea we're not even thinking about that stuff right now the game needs to be great before we get there um, but uh, to me I mean as an artist I want to say as much freedom as it makes sense for an artist to have um, I don't think we I don't think in particular we really want to shackle people um, with those sort of things good answer um, yeah like it's I mean, it's we we've our our initial like I would say it hasn't even been a month since Ashton has been mm -hmm. out, but it's it's been incredible as far as the results we're seeing and like how how are the community is interacting like we love the community like a lot it's it's always been at least my desire and I can, I'm speaking for Adam and everyone else but we always wanted to kind of foster this great community that like people could make friends at and like just get along and it's just friendly kind and whatnot and we're seeing that and it's awesome. Um, and, and in a way, we've almost grown super fast, like way more than we expected. Mm -hmm. um, and the reception has been great. And so we're working really hard on like just making more content, fixing performance issues, um, basically building up so that we can keep supporting the game as fast and quick as possible. Because um, mm -hmm. game development is slow, as, as you can see from Adam working. Like one one thing takes a long time to work, and that's not just the end of it, right? Like. It has to go into it, it needs to be brought into the game uh there's some programmatic stuff that will ha like at least uh, not for this one since there that that foundation already exists but then like i'm gonna have to go in and do some audio for it possibly and so it's not just a one-off thing where you can just spend an hour and there's there's content like two hours of content for the player it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a process so i just we yeah it's it's, it's something we're absolutely working on and uh and really like are hammering away at it as fast as possible but the the amount of like desire for the community and just players to get more stuff isn't quite we're not quite there right um with keeping up with the the band but we're, we're working on it yeah and i think it's important to say that um you know we have we have multiple priorities 
uh, obviously getting people up and running in the game is is the big one for us. You know, we don't want people just to be straight up unable to play the game, and you'll notice a lot of our patches are focused on that. But that doesn't mean that uh, you know three or four of us aren't focused on content, which is certainly what what the reality is. I know Jacob's very uh, hard at work on um, the first major content update, and the stuff that he's cooking up there is incredibly exciting. Um, and what I'm working on is actually, and he's got content for that already, and he'll, he'll probably make a request for a, a bit more to support it. But what I'm working on is sort of stuff that is not not long term out, but it's sort of midterm out, and it's just stuff that we can kind of baby step in. So I can already get this in the game once it's ready, and we've got some established gameplay around it. But really, um, uh, it's it's not it's not done, right? Like it's just sort of it's kind of a no brainer to say that about a game that's in pre alpha, but it's. Um, it's sort of the first step to that. Also, by the way, guys, I need to say something really quickly. Uh, I am fully, <laughs> I think I'm hyper aware that I talk fast sometimes. So if you guys notice uh, me doing it, um, uh, please call it out. And Riley will, uh, Riley will slap me upside the head as best he can over Mike to, uh, <laughs> to, to slow down a little bit. I just get very excited about some things that I'm working on. Okay, this is starting to come together. This is starting to be something anyway. Now this is going to be a little bit more detailed than the other ones, but that's okay. Um, making Magic Three asks, do you use normal maps or any big maps, or is it mostly materials dash smoothing groups? There are uh, no textures in, um, and I could put an asterisk beside that. But there's no there's no textures in Astroneer. Uh, I have not unwrapped a model in a year since I left Ubisoft. Uh, and even then when I was at Ubisoft, I wasn't doing it, um, just because I was, uh, an art director there. So it's been a long time since I've unwrapped a model uh, and I'll, okay. I'll talk, I'll talk about what unwrapping is in just a second, but there's yes. no, <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no textures in the game. We use textures for things like the UI when we need to, there's a couple of like really kind of rare looking particle effects and stuff that, uh, one of the technical artists that we're working with, um, has set up. So we use kind of like, uh, height maps and information maps but we don't use like pure textures there's no textures in the game uh unwrapping is let me see if i can find something and just demonstrate that super quickly well, well, why don't well, first can you can you deconstruct what that question is for me and for probably half the audience like what's a what's a normal what's a, map or big maps yeah so a normal map is a so when it, whenever we uh apply material to an object so the material is the thing that gives it the texture that's on top of it so the color data the lighting data uh the bump data um, a normal map is part of the bump process. So when you have, for instance, uh, dirt on the ground and the light shines over top of it, a normal map is going to be the material that the game uses to um, make that object look like it has depth to it. So the stones are going to come out of the ground, the mud might recede into the ground, and sometimes they'll even get shadowing and lighting that, that gets affected by that. Um, so no, our game does not use normal maps. Um, uh, like I said, we don't even use any textures in general, so we don't have a lot of that pass that goes on. We just straight use flat color shaders for, I would say, 99% of the, the content that goes in there. Um, yeah, we also don't have any diffuse maps, which is the color side of it. We don't have any specular maps, which is like how shi or specular or uh, reflectance maps, which is how shiny an object is, how much light does it reflect, how much does it uh, uh, retain. We don't have any of that going on. Is that good, cool. Ryan? Is that a good answer? That's a good answer. Yeah, I, I am learning so much. <laughs> Usually, in, in a typical game envi development environment, I do not interact with people like Adam. Mm. Um, there's usually like five people or five departments between the people modeling and then the audio. So like, I use in, in, in a normal setup, it's usually me talking to animators or VFX artists, not. Not the Adam folk. Yeah. Not my kind. Not your kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's I'm I'm glad we can build a bridge. Oh yeah. shoot. I was uh, <laughs> what's up? No, sorry, I was talking to myself. Go ahead. Oh. Uh actually here's a really good question. Um from M Digins, uh, does development for console and PC simultaneously have any impact on the PC version? I, people with high-end systems being scaled back to compensate for the console hardware. No. Um, no. 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 no not at all. It's 
We just build a game. Yeah. I mean, we build a game on a PC. We test it on Steam. We play it on PCs. Um, uh, as an artist, the last time I loaded up the game on an Xbox was around the time that we launched, and that was just so I could play it. I own it on an Xbox, which is just over there. Um, but, uh, I mean, no, we're developing on a PC. We're playing it for a PC. The game is not low-spec looking or low spec feeling you know it's not low poly because we wanted to build it for a console in fact going to console came very very late into our um development when we were when we were building it privately um so no it's not being catered or uh dumbed down or anything like that by console we were just building the game and then we went to platforms that supported it so obviously we wanted to do something that was a paid alpha which is early access um and uh you know, I we all own consoles ourselves, so it'd be you know, hey, it would be great if we could play it on there. Um, we were lucky enough that one of the consoles has a sort of paid alpha, uh, early access business the game preview uh, yeah. platform, which is Game Preview on on Xbox. And uh, because our game ran on on Xbox and uh, Unreal is is doing really well with uh, the, the Microsoft infrastructure, it kind of just made sense for us to do it. It doesn't take up any more time, uh, other than us just sort of pack, excuse me, packaging the builds and getting it out there. Uh, and we are, it does take time in that we are optimizing the engine right now, but we were going to do that regardless. It's just now that we're on a console, we just have to do it um, yeah. uh, a little more concentrated. Uh, but no, the game, I don't think the game, I mean, from my point of view, especially as an artist and at least somebody that has exposure to the rest of what the guys are doing, uh, the team is doing. Um, no, I don't, I, I think the answer is no on that. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't really done anything there. Uh, by developing it on the Xbox, we did lower our, our min spec. But that was something we always wanted to do anyway, so it, it didn't take away from anything. Yeah, I mean, from, um, from from a business side, and I think it's fine to say this because we'd like to be transparent, but from a business side, the lower our min spec is, the more uh, people that can install it, right? So the more revenue mm -hmm. the game would make so that we can then hire more people. So it just makes sense for us to go min spec, and because the min spec also happens to be where consoles are at, um, or you know, around there, it supports it, then it just made sense for us to go there. Yeah, and, and and so yeah, some of our our uh, I I will only like say a couple sentences out because it's obviously not my mm -hmm. my field, but uh, there are some occasions where we will tighten up. Like I, I think the latest thing that was adjusted was like we tightened up the physics boundary because there were some bugs, but it wasn't really a oh yeah, we want to make sure that people on MinSpec aren't having performance issues. It was mainly like oh rovers were falling through the ground. Yeah, we need to tighten this up. So. And ideally, all that stuff will come back into uh, options menu settings. But again, it, yeah, it, back to the game development thing is like options menus seem like such a mundane, easy task. It, they never are. They're yeah. like when you when a big AAA studio, they have usually like one or two UI programmers mm -hmm. full time mm -hmm. just doing that. Mm -hmm. at, at the same time, you have. Uh, like maybe one or two UI artists as well. So like that's it's not a, a simple like oh I can just add this real quick. Yeah. Thing. It's a it's a bit of an it's, undertaking. It's a, it's annoyingly hard. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's put and, it and, and and on top of that none of us have experience in that. So that's why our yeah. UI uh how do I say this? Uh that's why our UI like the text and the cards that pop up there's not a lot of unification there. You know, you'll notice that uh, sometimes you'll get a little white card that pops up at the bottom. You'll get text that comes kind of comes up. That's because none of us are UI designers or UI programmers, so we've all sort of just poked at it over time as as uh, uh, a job necessitated it. So um, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on UI design is a big thing for us right now, um, just so that I think we think it will make the overall experience of the game that much better. Um, but that's just that's just one example there. Um. And then, uh, yeah, actually, adding to that, I mean, both Adam and uh, Zabir have like every time I, like, I see them together, they're talking about UI stuff yeah, and yeah. Like, improvements. So yeah, we have we have it's, like, it's we have good little... ideas. I think we have good ideas going forward. It's just a matter of uh, us doing it. Yep. Um, oh, here's a really good one, and uh, it's gonna just make Adam explode because this is like probably number one on the hit list for him is a uh, hammer four one one four. What's going on? With planets losing color upon reloading the same a game huh. state. So this is really funny and it only came up like this wasn't a problem for a long up time. Until maybe the last week of game development. And like I think we just first started noticing it. 
Oh no, when I was recording the trailer, I noticed it when Paul and I jumped into a state game. And like, I think in, the, in, in one of the shots in the trailer, there's a like rock mm -hmm. that was supposed to be like grayish brown and it's like kind of white. And so you can see the discontinuity in it. Um, yeah, so we have, so uh, <clears throat> the short answer, and this is my, my very basic understanding of the issue is uh, that's a bug. First of all, mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the work that Zabir is doing right now on all the engine optimization. So I'm sure everybody that's played Astroneer has noticed that the longer you play Astroneer, the uh, less and less the frames get over time. You'll start at 60 FPS. By the time you're done, you might be around 15, 20 FPS. So Zabir is working right now as I'm talking to you on fixing that issue. And he has been for the last few days. It's a big one for mm -hmm. us. It yeah, it's, it's actually not a trivial fix, too. It's not a trivial um, fix. So, uh, hey, so just, it's... Just, just one second, Riley. Oh, yeah, uh, go on. Uh, go and on. Um, the, uh, the art assets, the gray stuff, is is in turn affected by that same issue. So when Zabir solves the issue um, with that degradation of performance over time, we'll also see the art get a lot of its color back. And you might be wondering, well, what does the color have to do with the uh, engine optimization? And we use a we use a system uh, in. I'm going to switch over just because I'm doing a bit of talking here. Just one second. So we do a lot of stuff in the game where I haven't actually, and, and I'm responsible to a lot of the the plants and the props and stuff. Uh, we do a thing where I don't actually define the color of the plants themselves. That comes from the terrain color, which I do define. So every biome that's in the game has a color palette of let's say four colors and like a light version and a dark version of those colors. Um, and those were handpicked by me. So the terrain, when you see like purple grass and like a blue sky, that, that was all stuff that I've chosen. Um, and every planet has a few of those to choose from. So it's not all the, always the same. And then what happens is we'll put a plant. So let's say my phone here, uh, let's say my pen here is, uh, my, my hands on the ground. My, this is the plant that goes in there. This plant is being told to take the color of the terrain and, and apply that to the, the plant. Uh, right now, that's not happening on a lot of the stuff in there. And that's why you'll see it as gray tone, because you can kind of see where the, the light and the dark version of those colors are coming in. Um, but that's the intention, is that those plants adhere and uh, uh, excuse me absorb the color from the terrain, and they get applied to that, that plant. And then you'll also notice that sometimes it'll be like a purple base with uh, yellow leaves. And that's because I've told the engine, uh, or told that plant, you know, instead of taking the purple, I want you to go on the opposite end of the color wheel and choose the complementary color to that, so that we always get a nice blend of colors that pop out and stuff like that. Uh, and that's what's going on. Unfortunately, somewhere in the optimization that got broken, uh, but like I said, the stuff, in my understanding, is the, the stuff that Zabir is focusing on now with that degradation over time, that'll get resolved in there, which will make me super happy, because everybody's taking amazing <laughs> photos of our game right now, and all of the plants that I uh, spent time on are, are gray. It kind of makes me sad. Yeah, that, that one is a really sad bug. <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I think there was a YouTuber, oh, man, one of the first days that we started like sending out the mm -hmm. game was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, my the, the plant I dug up is now white. Did it die? It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did die. And I died a little bit on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that will be fixed soon, hopefully. Oh, I'm going to switch it back because I'm working on modeling again. You guys don't need to see my face. Yeah. Um, man. We need to answer questions about 10 times faster because every time we do, like a million other questions. I know. I'm, I'm taking a long time answering these questions. This is. This well, that's is, good. That's No, no. Yeah. Don't. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's all good. It's okay. just. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have uh, a lot of questions. Um, so repeat them if I don't take care of them. But I'm like 10 minutes behind in questions. So. Uh, Alpha Penguin and Z. Are you planning to add space stations that we can add modules like hangars, etc.? Uh, that's a question. Possibly. That's a that's a really good question. I mean, there's stuff like that that is so. I think I think I think it'd be cool if Astroneer had that in there. Um, and you know, we, for sure, uh, Jacob's got a lot of cool stuff planned for the orbital gameplay, uh, things like that. That maybe a station makes sense. We already have a space station in the game that you kind of start on that you launch from. Um, and I even remember him talking about building space stations a lot, like a year and a half ago as a, as a thing. But um, that's just, you know, part of this development process is that we have the direction we're going in. And if it makes sense from that direction standpoint to put stations in, then we will. And obviously we'll have a little bit of a head start here on um, uh, that content for that. 
But uh, right now, it's not a focus of ours. Uh, but it's certainly one of those things, you know, one of those ideas we've stuck to the wall, and we'll see if it makes it in, its way into the game. It's a it's a request or a suggestion that we hear a lot of, so we know that people are kind of fans of the idea at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's just a sort of TBD at this point, and uh, it just depends on where Jacob goes with the design and what he wants to what, what he wants to do with that. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're not the best people to answer this question or the next one that kind of feeds into it is. Uh, sure. Felix Pack, uh, is there any plans to build any bigger infrastructures? If so, would there be interiors available, a la Subnautica? Um, so that kind of, I think, falls into what Adam just said. Yeah. Like, I, interiors kind of fulfill that like astronaut fantasy as well. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's again one of those things where it's like we everything that we do kind of has it's it's not superficial, right? Like it's not something like I mean, using the wreckage for example, right? Like you don't go to that wreckage and it does nothing. It, there is some functionality whether you can grab stuff from it has an interior space that you can get into or like pull the damn solar panel to your base and connect Mm -hmm. it like there is like something to do with it it's not just like junk we throw into the game and i think there had to be meaning in what and i'm speaking 100 percent for jacob so he can he can redact my statement anytime he wants but i think there's there's has to be some purpose to it before we we actually implement implement it, and so, so the, some of those things are unknowns uh, until we actually start poking at the game and, and feeding it mm-hmm. and and seeing how it plays. Um, so yeah, that's it's. I would love it. I think that would be a fantastic thing, um, and we'll see. Uh, unless you have anything more to add, I'll no, do another I'm, one. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh. Uh, I Zuri Freon. Sorry about names, everyone. Uh, I apologize if I sound impatient, but do you know when the next major content update is planned? A friend and I have spent quite a few hours mucking around and want more content. Also, awesome job on the art. Um, yeah, uh, there is one in progress that's going to actually be a big one, uh, we believe. And Jacob's working hard on that right now. Probably literally is working on it. Yeah. Um, and it's it's gonna add a lot to the game. I uh, I, I saw. I don't want to I don't want to spoil some of the fun, but there's like some really cool, exciting little things um, and bigger ones too that that will really um, change how the game can get played. Um, there's a lot of like connecting the dots, so just adding more more depth to everything. Mm-hmm. So it's not always like complexity that we need to add. It's like sometimes it's like okay, well. A plus B, and then and you get one more thing, and it's like, wow, I can do like I now have all these choices, yeah, and a lot more, more, more things to solve or figure out, or that that for me, and I think a lot of us is where a lot of fun comes from. Is it's like when I first saw the Unreal demo back, uh, I don't know, this is years ago, and like I was like blown away like by like the snappable component stuff. It's mm-hmm. like it, it opens up so many possibilities where it's like. Oh, I can do this, and it's like, before you even know if you can do it or not, like you think, okay, what if I do this and this and this? I can, can I snap a solar panel onto a rover? And now it's everyone that's played the game that's mundane, but mm-hmm. at the time it was like, whoa, yeah, that was big. And first. so I think that more of those things, I think, really add to the game a lot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely something planned. Uh, I don't want to give a date because we, we are not the best at like sticking to dates as people that knew about the game in 2016 are aware <laughs> i think also it's not just that we're bad we're we're not good at sticking dates i think we're just very good at making sure that what we deliver is substantial it, yes act, that's a way better way to put it than, um we, and we that, are not and that we're actually we're actually okay with uh pushing out something if it means that when it actually comes out um It'll be a uh, you know a substantial experience for the people. Oh wow, this is this is an ugly mesh. If there's any artists looking at this feed right now, I apologize on behalf of everybody. Sorry, I'm cleaning this up super quick. Um, oh my god, it's bad. It's so bad. Okay, hang on. Fixing, fixing. Is there any more like that? I thought I got them all when I made it. Oh, this is. God, I can't believe you guys hired me to work on this. This is. This is terrible. Um, yeah, so we just sort of push things out just to make sure that when, when it goes out there, it's substantial. At the same time, if we get, if I do find that if we get something that's in the game and it's fun, 
we will ship it as quick as we can. Right? So we kind of, we kind of, we just make sure that it's got that fun, that fun, in my choice of words is going to be brutal, but uh, that funness. Uh, oh my god, this is so bad. This is embarrassing. <laughs> um, I swear I fixed this. I feel like I'm, I feel like somebody came in here and messed it up on me just to embarrass me. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll take the time. So uh, it's safe to say that it, we'll ship it when it's ready. Uh, but we are working very fast to get it ready. And Jacob's really good at that. He's really good at doing, uh, you know, once he hits an idea, it's like, it's it's go time and we get it out as quick as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Adam, this is not a question as much as I think some people are having a problem with the, the stream being only 1080p or I, I'm like really like, not sure what the issue is, but are you streaming at a higher quality rate this time around, or is it? No, it's 1080p. Why? What's up? Is it bad? Oh, I think so. I think some people are having a hard time keeping up with it, and I don't know if they can modulate. I don't know. Let me look at the chat real quick. What sure. Issue. Is no, this is. The, I mean, this is the, this is the same as I've always done. So hopefully it's okay. okay. Uh, it should be 1080p mostly because I want to put it on YouTube when we're done. Um, so the people that can't make okay. it can watch. All right. Seems like uh, just a, ca a couple people are. Oh, look at this. Who? Oh my God. I'm so embarrassed right now. Um, uh, and, and I don't, e oh. I, I don't even want to sit, sit here and explain why I'm hating myself because it's just nonsense. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. Well, you keep, keep doing that. I'll, I'll keep uh, answering questions. Uh, someone, I, I already missed it. Chat's going by too fast, but someone asked about the winch being buggy. Uh, yeah, what? I think no it's a, yeah that that thing is like the most stable thing ever. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I wonder if he specifically. I mean, it's 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 a definitely a weird thing in the game, and yeah, that's being worked on. I think especially for multiplayer, it's like I think it doesn't even flat out work. Uh, if the client side grabs it, it like freaks out. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's that's one another one on the list. Like we have a lot, um, which that then segues to another question I had written down somewhere. Uh, Potato MC Whiskey, uh, do you guys have an internal QA team, or are you mostly relying on the community? Uh, we 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 used an external QA team um, a lot, like early on, right before before launch, and we haven't uh, picked them back up yet. Um, so we're mostly. So we are doing the QA side thing, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to continue specifically with them or go to something else. Because part of the, I think that the thing that caught us uh, the most off the guard was the AMD issue with crashes. So uh, yeah. for those that, that didn't actually catch the resolution of that, there was about eight percent of users playing the game right at launch that were crashing. Or no, sorry, it wasn't a crash. It was basically you drop to one frame. Or uh, actually, sorry, actually there was two bugs. This is the fun AMD issue. Uh, there was one bug with some code thing that was causing crashes mm -hmm. with uh, a certain AMD client. But then there was a second bug with people uh, that had AMD cards and some other audio inner like driver thing. It was a weird thing, but it was like 8% of the users were having this issue. Mm -hmm. And it was caused by uh, uh, basically any kind of sound parameter in Unreal. Yeah, which yeah was, that, I, remember, I remember that. That was a nasty one. It took forever to figure out, yeah, um, because none of us had the the hardware to do it, and so we kind of relied on the community to figure it, like let mm -hmm. us know what it, what specific instances was happening. And what it was was, any time that we were using an EQ filter, so basically rolling off high or low end frequencies, or sending sound through a reverb. So like when you were underground, the game would slog down to basically like one frame per second, or mm -hmm. like it would just freeze and hold. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that was a weird issue that we were like so shocked by because it it it, it well, it ended up having us to rip out that stuff so we'll, we'll get it back in at some point but it was a, a, just a temp fix to keep people be able to play the game mm -hmm. um, so the, yeah there's no EQing right now on sounds or reverb in caves anymore unfortunately um, but yeah so that was a, a situation where we we had this QA service and kind of were surprised and uh, that like they that we weren't able to catch that stuff so uh, i think the the benefit of using the community is 
uh, for right now at least, is that we have the ability to like basically have every single CPU, GPU on the market is testing the game right now and we can, can solve those issues. That's why it's so important for you guys to send DX Diags directly to us. Then we can actually look, see what you guys are running. Yeah, and, and I figure think, out some of the I, issues. I think I think the important thing here to say too is that you know, uh, the last game I worked on at Ubisoft where I was part of the project from beginning till end was uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. And we all know how buggy that was at launch. And um, I think something like worldwide, you know, like 900 people worked on that game, including dev testers. And I know that the dev test team was like in the hundreds. And there's no amount of people that a developer, even on a team that massive, there's no amount of time that a developer can throw at a game and, and, and do the redundancies and get it tested that will equal even the first, you know, couple of hours that a game comes launched and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are playing it. It'll never equal that. And we just sort of saw that, um, uh, what's the word? We saw that uh, happen. Like we saw it sort of firsthand ourselves. Um, so that even with us testing it and with a QA uh, team that we teamed up with to test it, you know, just the second we get it out there and there's every kind of uh, hardware uh, uh, set up there, um, it got broken. Now, that doesn't mean we don't learn from this and we don't test these things in the future. 100% that's what's going to happen. Um, but just that, that's just the sort of the reality of it is just we just the hardware that they were testing on, the hardware that we were using just never matched the sort of 8% of, or so of people that were affected by it. Luckily, mm -hmm. we were able to turn around and fix, and I think those people, fingers crossed, are pretty happy now. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of a reality, at least something that I learned early on, um, is that uh, you know there's nothing that will ever equal the sort of power of just getting it to the player. Yeah. Right, let, me, let me take a second here to read the chat and see if there's anything I can answer. Uh, Adam, what are you guys planning in regards to farming, hunger, food in general, etc.? <laughs> How would that be implemented without impeding the elegance? Uh, oh, this is going too fast. Simplicity of the game, and how could it be differentiated, uh, differentiated from oxygen in terms of simple meter than depletes? Uh, that's from Cap Sierra. Uh, Cap Sierra, I have no gosh darn idea. Um, and I say that because you specifically asked me. That is for Jacob to solve. He is a wizard of that kind of stuff. That is his, that is his uh, forte. Um, you know, farming and hunger. Actually, uh, I wonder if I should. I wonder if I should tease it, Riley. Do you think I should? Uh, I I will tease it because I have a perfect pun. Okay, go there ahead. is gonna in a in an update coming soon. There's gonna be a seed of an idea that you can that you you can like at least <laughs> figure out, and and it's gonna at least tease. Uh, okay, I was trying to do another pun, but I won't. Um, but yeah, it'll tease some of the ideas. Yeah, I'm just like shaking his head. Yeah, that was a terrible pun. But but you said it; it's, it's in there. So we'll I see. We'll, so, see. we'll see what yeah. people say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, there there is a seed of an idea. Oh boy, uh, we are not clever at all with our puns. But anyway, there it is. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one that I, I just saw a question I really want to talk about. Uh, it's going too fast. Adam, do you have a plan to add crust, mantle, and core for the planet? Hell to the yes, I do. Um, so right now our game has biomes on the surface. And I really, I need to stop talking and just get back to modeling because otherwise this thing will never get in the game and Jacob's going to hate me. But uh, right now we have biomes on the surface. And as you go down, you kind of notice, you know, there's caves and stuff like that. The caves are really our first jump into subterranean biomes and i think that's such a cool thing for us to explore so what i would love to do uh, and as long as the gameplay makes sense and you know jacob jacob uh, uh vets this idea is i would love it so that the deeper down you get the harder the biomes get and the harder the terrain gets so we could do crust and mantle and you know you need to bring drills down to the surface you need to like you know gong 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 drill drill through the drill through the, the terrain to get to the core and then what do you do with the core so yeah for sure i want to layer it in all these different biomes and the caves at the first sort of first you know, me dipping my toes into this idea uh, and Jacob dipping his toes into this, in, into this idea. Um, but yeah, I would love, I would love, love, love for that to go. Um, anyway, I should not read the chat because I am not going to get any work done. So I will let you keep keep going on with that. Okay, so I've got this thing colored. I was just coloring the, uh, I was just coloring the uh, cupola. Uh, well, 
Okay, so where are we at in the chat? Okay, so uh, one Crusader. This is a long time ago. Yes, this Crusader O nine. I have a question. I want to make a community form for Korean users. May I make form officially just for Korea? Um, I don't know if there's like an official like stamp that we do or whatever, but yeah, go for it. Like make the form. Like yes. make a community if you want. Stamped on the camera. Yes. Astroneer, system era, official stamp of approval. Do your community, my friend. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously none of us. Uh, speak foreign language, though mm -hmm. Adam should, since he's in Canada, you should be French speaking, but uh, Jesus. yeah, like uh, <laughs> it's like practically next door. Come on, yeah, come on, yeah. I walked out, uh, <laughs> never mind, never mind, gonna make a joke, just keep going, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, so obviously, we can't manage those or anything, but I, I we, uh, I guess I can, while you work, I can mm -hmm. talk about the localization, of yeah, the, and what we did for that is. Like an astronaut has like very little text in the game, and it's all just small things like mm -hmm. solar panel. Or, like I think I think the most text in the game is when you launch it. It's just like a blurb from us. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's very uh, global. I, I guess it's a, is that the best way to say it? it's it's non-American or Canadian really. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the art style that you guys put in place is very. Again, it's not Gears of War type of characters running around that look very like culturally one-sided mm -hmm. uh so we we localize the game uh heavily and and want a international community that's that's uh, huge for us and so uh if if you want to support the game on the korean side that's awesome that's really cool uh we would love that it's just something unfortunately we since we don't speak korean we can't really do it ourselves uh, we the best we can do is localize it and I, I i haven't looked at chat in a second but i'm sure there's people from those regions saying that yeah that there's some messed up words and oh for sure we're well aware um and i think just spinning off of that is again like it's uh, the chat can tell me if this stuff is boring to talk about because this i guess is a game dev stream um and not specifically talking like uh talking about only like specifically astroneer stuff is like we can talk about game development mm -hmm. and part of that is with uh with localization you you basically well one you can also do it for um, dialogue and that's always the biggest pain like i've worked on some projects where you have 15 different languages and you have to translate it all organize that and oh boy yeah the dialogue editing for that is the worst uh, which is why sims 4 was awesome to work on because it's all in simlish and you don't have to localize uh, but anyways uh yeah, so when when you localize, you have to send it off it and get it translated, and it's usually just an Excel doc that you send with some context clues and whatever. But for for the way the game is set up, it's not people discussing lines of dialogue or whatever. It's it's like when you there's like a piece of compound, it's gonna say compound over, it's gonna hover over and say solar. It's a, yeah, I think it just says solar, not mm -hmm. even solar panel. So it's even less of that. So there's some issues with that where those translated lines didn't have enough context uh, sensitive like information on it of what that meant so i think we got i just had an email that i saw yesterday of like uh i forget what language it was in um but it, the the problem i think it was polish maybe but the problem was that polish version of solar which we intend to be solar panel or whatever was like sunshine or something like that or <laughs> like sunny and so it was it was wrong and and so yeah we were aware ish of not all the issues but we're we're i'm gonna try to fix it uh with with the team that we outsourced um that too um and it's it's not really anyone's fault it was just well i guess it, if anything it's my fault um oh, because i, 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 I don't have enough context to it i just gonna play, <laughs> i'm just gonna blame you yeah let's just yeah. do that well uh, yeah and then it probably it has to fall on someone and i i'll take yeah. i'll take your responsibility for any and all translation errors even mm -hmm. though i don't speak that language so yeah it's it's a matter of getting context i know russian and china was really weird to do uh i think those had the most questions initially because just some of those words don't quite line up properly so it is a thing we're working on and it's uh another one of those million little issues that you probably don't think about when when you play the game mm. uh and yeah so i have a list of those and we'll we'll bang them out a little bit better I think you should just take Korean lessons and then just do it yourself. 
That's true. I'll just learn. I think we have 13 languages supported. Yeah, just do it all, man. And I got, yeah, one out of 13. And I think we want to add at least Turkish um, and maybe more. Uh, by the way, S.T. Kelly, Simlish was the best decision Will Wright ever made. Simlish is awesome. Um, except for when you work editing dialogue for multiple days and go home on a weekend and you have a Simlish song stuck in your head <laughs> for the entire weekend. Did you work on, oh, that you worked, you worked on The Sims, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. It was fun. It was, it was good for a bit. Um, after a while though, you get a little tired with, uh, uh, doing inanimate objects for a bit. Like it really grows your ability of trying to make these little things sound interesting or unique. But, uh, it, after two and a half years of it, it was like, all right, ready to move. Mm -hmm. But a cool team nonetheless. Um, let's see. Well, now that hundred people just left because I was talking about localization, uh, jump to another one. Uh, oh, this is relevant to you, Adam. Adam, I notice this is Max. Hang on. One, Hang two, on. one. Oh no. Uh, what did I do? Where wow. did my piece go? Ah! Somebody just pointed it out. Oh no. Can I, <laughs> can I can I swear on our own Twitch? Am I allowed to do that, do you think? I could probably swear. I'm a big boy. How long have you been modeling? <laughs> oh god, I fixed it. Okay, that scared me. I thought I lost it. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, whoever pointed that out. Hey Adam, can we make the Death Star in the future? No, because I would like to keep my job and not get sued by Disney. Thank you. Next question. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, no. We'll, we'll just call it this. The Star of the Death. Moon. The Star of Death. Death. Death Moon. Death Moon. Actually, one of our one of our planets uh, originally kind of looked death. like a Death Star when it had that giant ass crater. It did have crater. a crater. Yeah. That's a throwback to the people that watched the first Twitch stream. Yeah. Uh, Adam, I noticed. Uh, you place your assets by hand instead of always mirroring and moving the pixels. Question mark. Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know. I enjoy it this way, I guess. I mean, I, I actually do mirror. I do mirror a lot. Uh, but I just kind of, I don't know. I don't use a lot of modifiers and, and uh, uh, I guess I don't do it very smartly. I just kind of do what I enjoy, which is kind of hand placement. This is getting crazy. There's more greebles on this thing than there is anything else in the game. So maybe I should... Hang on. Let me, let me just take a little sanity check here really quickly. What did I do here? Like, look at this guy. Oh, yeah. I'm out to lunch. I've gone, I've gone too far. I've gone way too... Oh, I want to steal that greebles. That's a nice one. Okay. It's time... It's time to destroy this thing. Oh, wait. No. Okay. I got to finish the front really quick. Here. I'm going to cheat. Look at this. See, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to have to... Oh, I just swore. Okay, whatever. Holy shit. Uh, I'm going to have to put a bunch of greebles on this thing, but... And here's where 13 years of experience will come into play. I could get around that if I just do this. And now, I just saved myself a bunch of work. <laughs> okay. A little pro tip for you guys. Yeah, a little pro tip. If you guys are feeling lazy, just make things smaller. That'll go, that'll go a long, <laughs> a long, long this, way. This has been Adam's hot tech tips. Yeah. We should have a tip uh, jar. So when I drop these little knowledge bombs, you know, we'll get rich super fast. <laughs> uh, actually, I have a question of the way your workflow is. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, why do you have everything in one session? Oh, why do, okay. That's a good question. Um, so why do I have this? So, okay, here we go. This is every, I'm going to hide these cameras and these lights and stuff. Hang on a second. What's going on? Get out of here. Get out of here. Light up. Oh, 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 where is it? There it is. Get out of here. So this is, and we can fly around here really quickly. This is everything that's in the game right now. Everything that's not a plant or uh, a module that Paul's made. So I work, Paul and I work very differently. Him and I actually had a conversation about this not too long ago. I like to work where everything is in one giant max file. So here's all the TWTs. Here's all the things you can find. Oh, I haven't even put these guys in the game yet, I don't think. What is a TWT for the people that don't remember? And the uh, chat, because uh, I don't remember. Sure. A TWT is my terrible naming convention, uh, which stands for, and I hope you guys are ready because you're going to be blown away by my creativity. 
T A W T stands for Thing with Thing. Oh, that's right. Yes. I always, I hate that name, by the way. Oh, I hate it too. <laughs> but come on, man. It, it's me you're yeah. talking to. I can make art. I can't make words. Me, me words, no good. Um, yeah. So a TWT is uh, anything in the world that you can inter- interact with. So it's a thing, and it will have another thing on it that you can interact with. For example, those uh, research items that you pluck from the trees. That's a TWT. It's a tree with a thing, and this thing is a research item. Um, so the research items uh, are the things that you're bringing back to your base and you're researching, obviously. So this is what I call the discovery max file. So this is everything that we want players to come across and discover and usually interact with, spend some time with, and that's what this is. Uh, if I save this really quickly, I'll load up another max file that we can take a look at just to sort of demonstrate. Uh, where are we here? Game decorators. So these are all the plants and all the fun things that we use to decorate the worlds with. Um, and some of these may look familiar. Like here's the rods that have been around for a very long time. This is some stuff that I haven't even put in the game yet that I probably should. Oh, is this where I put... So I was just telling... I, wow, my voice. <clears throat> I was just telling Paul the other day that uh, uh, I feel like I dreamed I modeled a bunch of uh, um, Taurus rocks. Because I thought... I'm, I really love this idea of putting these like giant Taurus things in the world. Because I think those silhouettes are just so strong and, and, and uh, somewhat iconic uh, throughout history. Um, and I don't know where the hell they went. I don't know if I stuck them in a max file when I was sleep modeling. Um, so yeah, so this is this is just a bunch of just a bunch of plants. Uh, here's one that I made that looks like it has like testicles hanging from it, which is, you know, I don't think those are in the game. They might be. Um, uh, you know, these these are stalactite rocks over here. Oh, this guy's good. Why don't I have this guy in the game? Do I have this guy in the game? I should really go back and make sure that a lot of these things are actually in the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, work work dreams are the the weirdest things. Yeah, that's when you know, like, it's crunch time. It's like every time it's been like fourteen, sixteen hour days for a couple of weeks, you start going home, sleeping, and dreaming that you worked. Yeah, and then you go back to working. You're like, oh shoot, I still have to do that. That was only a dream that I I imagined I made that sound. Or so just just that. really quickly, this is a Taurus. If anybody's wondering what the hell I'm talking about when I say that, I want a bunch of rocks that have these sort of shape to it because I think I think this is a pretty iconic shape just in history in general. Um, so I would love to get some stuff in there because I think it's just a very striking thing. You're gonna see it in the distance. You're gonna want to go to it. Uh, if it's a rock, that may make be really weird to see like a Taurus shaped rock. Oh, here's a bunch of plants as well that my good friend Preston made for us. And there's a bunch of stuff in here that we just don't have in the game yet that'll make its way in there one day. But you can see there's a lot of cool little vegetation stuff. And here's a here's an astro near for scale. So you can see they're kind of nice and big. Yeah, so we have, we have a lot of stuff that we can still keep going. Uh, and what's, what's... Let me see if there's one more max file that I could use to demonstrate this. Oh, so anyway, so I was saying Paul and I work differently. Paul likes to work where uh, everything he works on has its own individual max file. And he's got his reasons for that, and that works for him. Uh, I tend to work where I have one max file that I can put all my crap into, and that lets me fly around and see how they're all sort of gelling together because there needs to be unification in, in the art style. Uh, also, I can check scale. I can check my color usage, things like that. Uh, what do I have here? I have game uh, discoveries ob- objects. What's th- oh. Ooh, can I load that one and not spoil anything? Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Oh, I can't load that one. That'll spoil. I think I can load up this one. Let me see here. Yeah, you guys have all seen this guy. So this is what I mean. So in the game, this guy is like green and red. But in my max file, it's like brown and gray. It's very drab. And what's important is just how the color separation works. So I've got three colors here. I'll turn off the edges so you can see it. But in the game, I end up coloring them a little bit differently. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I think I might have spoiled something in that. But let's just go ahead and... Leave it. Is there any, actually, uh, I, I, you know, you know what? I never even checked to see if there was any spoilers in this one, the one I've been working out of this whole time. <laughs> I guess uh, this, I guess this uh, is gonna be a spoiler because this guy's not in the game, and we want to get the big, the big, uh, the big. What the hell? Why isn't this one in the game? This is. Hang on a second. I gotta load up the editor right now. And figure out why <laughs> WTF this game. Oh, ah! I see spoilers. Hang on. Oh. Yep, Uh-oh. I'm hiding them. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, 
uh, while you're doing that, uh, MR Reacher fix, so that when you load a save, you will not crash. Happened to me, like, a lot of times, you need to restart, save over, go across the entire... So that's, that, that, the best thing to do there is send us an email, con or support, wait, is it SC, what's our support? Help me out, Adam. What are you asking? What's our support what is, email? What is our support email? Yeah. Uh, support at systemair.net. Okay, it's that simple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, send it to that. Send your DX diag. If you can send a save file, we can actually test it and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we can hopefully fix the save so that, or fix the issue so that you can load that save. Because there there have been a couple people that have been sending us to those, and we've like really, uh, I think Brennan specifically has like really knocked out a few of these like really nasty save game bugs. And it, it, what it takes those, we need those saves to look at. Yeah. Um, and by we, not Adam and I. No, hell uh, no. Brennan, Brennan is a beer. Do not you, you, send us those. <laughs> yeah, don't send those to us. You guys send me a save game and it looks Greek, Greek to me when I open it up. Um, so. so I just want to do, because Riley, we just passed our first hour. I'm just going to do a quick recap and then talk about next steps here. While you're doing that, I'm going to get some coffee. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw a couple people comment on my giant mug. Just so you guys know, I'm six foot five and about 310 pounds. I'm a big dude. This is my big glass. Keeps me hydrated. All right, while Riley's gone, let's talk about him. He's he's also tall and handsome. He's a tall, handsome man. And I hope when he watches this in the rewind that he gets super embarrassed that I said that to him. Uh, okay, so uh, I have made this giant ass uh, space station. Uh, some of you are like, are we going to put a space station in the sky? I think that would be cool, but that's not what this is. We are building more wreckage for you to come across because there's only, apparently there's only two of them in the whole game right now, even though I've built more. So I'm actually loading up Unreal to check that. Um, and uh, what I, the way I build this stuff, especially when I'm going to destroy it, is I actually like to build it intact and kind of like done uh, so that I can kind of visualize. Uh, Riley, are you back, by the way? I am back. Yeah, cool. Don't worry about it. We didn't talk about you at all. It was totally fine. Um, um, the the way I like to build this stuff is uh, get it intact, get it all set up, and uh, then break it, then break it down, figure out how I want to destroy it. And that way I have something intact that I, I can always go back to. And I've also got stuff um, that is broken in, in the game, and that's what we're working on. I just want to load up Unreal super fast. Because I want to know why the hell I'm not using that massive... This massive... Like, what the hell? Why is this not in the game? Uh, and, okay, so actually we have a lot of Xbox questions on the chat. And we uh, we answered it at the beginning of the last hour. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of new people here too. So uh, X, the process with Xbox is we have to submit them a build. Uh, oh, hey, that build okay. goes hey, through... No, no. What? You can't talk about that. What? That's under NDA, my friend. Uh, the certification process? Yes. We have to go through certification That's... process. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you That's can say the steps. Me. I don't think you can say the steps. I think that's all it is. So just be careful. Oh, no, yeah. No, I, that was like literally one step. Okay. We sit it through. They give the thumbs up. And that's how, like, so that's how every single game works. Mm -hmm. um, so like at Ubisoft, you guys would submit yep. the build. And yep. it's it's Xbox's quality control, basically. So yes. that's that's the big difference for yes. console and PC, I can we can upload the thing that crashes and it doesn't matter on PC. But for Xbox and uh, PlayStation and Nintendo, they're like, no, we we need you to make sure uh, all these little things work. And so that's kind of where that goes through, and it's just basically protecting the user from yeah. certain things. So yeah, and, and so that's and, why and, we just don't want people like. We, there's this sort of notion that, and we sort of talked about this already, but there's this notion that. Uh, you know, we've neutered parts of the game because of the console or, you know, we don't like consoles and that's why they get so fewer updates or they happen, you know, later in the time. The reality is we are developing Astroneer full stop. If it's on Steam, if it's on Xbox, that's the sort of a, a point that we don't really pay much attention to. We are just developing Astroneer within the Unreal Engine and we push it to Steam and we push it to Xbox. Uh, Steam is an open door. We can push an update every 10 minutes if we wanted to. Nobody's going to sort of uh, be a gatekeeper for that. We could just put this content out there and it goes out and then you guys get it right away the next time uh, Steam syncs up. Xbox has a bit of a process behind it uh, called certification where they have to sort of vet the content, make sure it's not going to do screwy things with your console, make sure there's 
content that's not in there that changes the you know things like the esrb rating and stuff like that so it's a long process that it goes through it takes a couple days and that's why xbox is is behind when we shoot updates now what we're doing with this current update is we're actually just going to try and see what it's like to push a, an update at the same time so the xbox and the, the windows 10 stuff is already in certification process right now it should be ready next week once it's ready and it goes live uh, then we will also push the steam update just so that there's parity for the first time uh, in the three weeks or so that we've been out uh, between all three platforms windows 10 xbox and uh, uh, steam uh, from there we'll just sort of again we'll, we'll, we'll change the process as we go through um but uh, I just want to quash that right now. There is no, there's no playing favorites on System Era for the, the consoles. We just care about the game in general, and uh, we follow the rules that we are ob obliged to when it goes to un updating on the platforms that we are on. So we love both. I own both. Uh, the other guys at the company own both. We want I to own both. both. Yes, we want to support both. Astroneer can run on both, so it just makes sense that we do that. So that's just the process we're going through. Uh, we love console and PC. Um, I am primarily a PC gamer. Uh, I, you know, 95% of the time I play games on PC, but uh, there is a place for that, uh, the game on console, and we're supporting both through and through. But we don't make, uh, we don't make, um, uh, we don't neuter any decisions for ideas and for development just because we're on on a console. That's that we're mm -hmm. we're not like that. We think that's stupid. Um, yeah. So that's that's just the reality. Yeah. Of it. I, I I mean. Again, being transparent, the only thing that by submitting on Xbox that we had to do and we wanted to do anyways was controller support. That's yeah. like the only, like literally the only thing that. But we, we had. also had, we also wanted that anyway. Yeah, and yeah. actually, that's what the best thing about that. And I'm glad because I like playing with controller more mm -hmm. than anything. Um, granted, I play more Astroneer on my PC with the mouse and keyboard just because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. there. But like we were going to actually probably have to cut that if we were releasing it in the timeline we did. But so it's here and we're going to keep obviously updating. There's like some issues with it still, but I think that's the only thing where it's just like, yeah, we have to spend time yeah. making controllers for it. And that supports PC players anyway. So yeah, it's just one of those things that like we were going to do it anyway. Like I said, be like, it's, it's just like the idea of us, of us lowering our min spec, right? Like we wanted to do that anyway. So us deciding to go to console just ensured that we did it. So it's just sort of like, we're not neutering anything or making decisions uh explicitly for one platform or the other it's just sort of when we're on both it just makes our decisions a lot easier that's all okay i'm trying to put a button on this thing super quickly here because i want to start effing this thing up and getting it in the game do it uh why don't we talk a bit about the community and the stuff that we're seeing online because uh, our awesome. our at least the reddit community and on our official forum the discord chat has a freaking awesome uh, Astroneer Media that I go through and try to steal screenshots from for our Twitch, or excuse me, for our Twitter. Uh, by the way, I try to give you guys credit. If I don't, uh, send me some hate mail directly and I will try to remedy that. Uh, please don't send me hate mail. Just slap me on the wrist over Twitter or something like that. Um, hopefully there's no hate. Uh, but yeah, uh, the stuff that we're seeing on Reddit especially, I think I think one of the favorite things that I've seen recently was that uh, Martian, uh, Mark Watney, uh, poster that somebody made that was effing awesome i showed i like i saw it on my phone i went and found my wife to show it to her uh i had the privilege ugh, i had the privilege of uh seeing the martian uh at the toronto film festival uh like nine o'clock in the morning when it first debuted so i was one of the first people in in canada to see it and so i've got a special uh connection to that story i loved it i've, I've read it twice um, so seeing that just kind of pulled on the heartstrings just a little bit because it's like it's a pop culture thing that I really enjoy. Um, I'm a huge Ridley Scott fan, uh, so that was really awesome. So whoever made that, thank you so much. That's one of my favorite things in the last few days that's come that's come out. Actually, Riley, if you could, uh, or Wyveris, uh, could either of you guys find that on Reddit and drop a link uh, in the chat? I think it's on our Slack, so I'll take a look. But yeah. there's actually two of them. Right? Like, are you talking about the poster art? I'm talking about the poster the... art that says we have to get him oxygen or it's a, it's a, uh, we have, okay. instead of, we have to get him you home. Also, you also linked the, uh, uh, um, space suit. One as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. I, that somebody, somebody did a very crude and they admitted it themselves a very crude, uh, mock up concept of what a, a astroneer suit might look like. Should it be inspired by, uh, Mark Watney suit from The Martian, and I thought that was cool as well. In fact, I shared it with our character artist to see if it uh, if, if it uh, inspires her a little bit. Yeah, uh, character artist is Heather Penn, by the way, and she is fantastic. Yeah, she's she's the one that made 
the water suit, suits. which everyone seems to like. She and, made all. Uh, she made all the suits actually. Well, yeah. Except yeah, for the, except, the first one. Except for the first one, some handsome man named Adam. I, I, I don't know. I think he's a good looking guy. He made it, um, and uh, Heather took over and did the other three. And she's done. Yep. A, she's the lead art or the only artist on um, Overland. Overland, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Adam I think Sultan she's thing? she might be the only artist or. I don't want to. I don't want to upset anybody on that team, but I know that she's responsible for a lot of the art art over there, and that game is mm. ridiculously beautiful. I know those those dogs are amazing in that game. It's Actually, like she did, she did a the thing that got my attention is she did a tweet, uh, or or Overland or uh, Finji uh, did a tweet where it was like all the characters were being swapped, like their heads and their hats and their chests and their their legs were being swapped, and I was like, this game looks ridiculous. I'm so jealous. And that that's when okay, that's okay. when I became a fan of of Heather's art was after that. Oh, thanks, Caseman. I actually found it before I saw your message. Uh, actually, I, I got a question that I want to talk about really quickly, and we like to be transparent about this stuff. It's somebody that just sent me a private message, um, and I'm just gonna say fuck it. We're just gonna address this thing right now. I'm gonna get all serious business here and go full cam as well. I got a private message from somebody who says, were you happy when No Man's Sky failed? And, uh, no, I mean, no, I wasn't happy when anybody, when anybody's game fails. Um, uh, I bought No Man's Sky the day it came out. Uh, the reason I'm making Astroneer is I love the idea of this game. Uh, my music stopped. I didn't mean to get my music, my music to stop to sound extra dramatic. <laughs> Hang on a second here. I'm not trying to like... Jesus Christ! Hang on a second. Let's let's rewind this. I'm not trying to be a that serious business. I'm just trying to make a point here that play play track danger one. Yeah, play. <laughs> okay, let me restart this. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy that No Man's Sky failed. Uh, I don't think anybody on the team was happy that No Man's Sky failed. I think um, you know when we look at games like No Man's Sky and we look at any game out there, System Era, uh, the six of us, we do an amazing job at learning from what our peers are doing and. Um. Uh, you know the 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 shit that uh, Hello Games has gone through with No Man's Sky is incredibly unfortunate, and I am not envious of anybody in the position that they're in now to to try to get themselves out of that. And I wish them the best of luck with that. Um, because I'm a fan of these games. I'm a fan of open world games. I love science fiction. I love space. And no, I don't. I don't want it to fail. I wanted it to to do well. I wanted it to set open world space genre as a thing that is accessible to people and a genre that is going to do very well because our game, our baby is going into that space. Um, so no, I did. I wasn't happy that it failed. I was happy that I get to learn from it and, and sort of break down maybe where they, where I feel they went wrong or where we can go. Right. But we do that with every game. We don't just do that with hello games and no man's sky. We do that with every game that we become fans of, uh, so that we can learn from our, our peers and see what they're doing. Um, and I just want to make that point. Like, the guys at Hello Games, they've got a hole to dig themselves out of um, that I think is very unfortunate because I think No Man's Sky has potential and had potential and, and is great. I actually I actually enjoyed it, um, which I don't I don't think there's any issue there with that. Um, but I also am a sucker for those kinds of games. So no, it's, it's the, the questions like this. The comparisons are one thing between Astroneer and No Man's Sky. Those are going to happen no matter what, and we're totally fine with those. It just it's what it is what it is. That that makes sense when we look at it from a from a player base. Um, but in terms of like you know celebrating somebody's failure, the answer is like fuck no. Like we don't we don't want to we don't celebrate those things. In fact, we try to learn mm -hmm. from them and and also support our peers right like this is a this is a, an industry that we that we participate in it's a very small industry um i think that's fair to say right riley i think I, oh yeah I think I yeah yeah I, 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 yeah i think that i think i think you hit it perfectly and also like hello like i don't know okay so no man's sky made astroneer better by by us being in development when they were out there and getting a lot of a lot of press like our game is better because of no Man's Sky, and our, our basically how we interact with community is better because of No Man's Sky. So yeah, and we're also not trying to say that our game is better than any of these games. It's just that it's saying that we feel we made more informed decisions about our own product, our own service, uh, because of these games. But that's also to say that our game is better because DayZ exists. Our game is better because The Long mm -hmm. Dark exists, uh, Subnautica, uh, Space like Engineers. It, yes. Our game I mean, is better I, because I, all of these games exist, and we get to look at them and break them down both from a developer's side and from a player side. DayZ is one of my all-time favorite games ever. Ever, 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 mm -hmm. ever. And we got to learn from there, uh, from them doing early access, 
to uh, from a mod like they, they they you know one of the things we learned is like what is it what happens when a mod goes from a huge viewership into early access right like their their buy rate for that must have been massive because they already have this massive community we don't get that benefit from Mastery. we went into early access blind with a very small community of people that kind of followed us on twitter and kind of followed us on reddit so we get to learn from those things and maybe make better and more informed decisions in the future um and and hello games and no man's sky just sort of fits into that but uh uh, no, like from my perspective, I wish those guys luck. I wish every developer luck uh, that goes through there. And that's not me being political. If I told, if I didn't like the game or I didn't like the developer, or whatever, I would say those things. Um, okay. But uh, no, it's 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 such a shitty sentiment uh, to assu to assume that we would be happy about somebody failing. And really, yeah. no, no, we just we want them to learn. We want us to learn. We want everybody, all these games, to get better. And um, and I think that's happening. Yeah, and 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 yeah, it's 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 it'd be foolish for us. And I'm again, I'm going to talk for Jacob here, and yeah. and because he's the lead designer. But like, this game wasn't made in a vacuum, mm -hmm. right? Like we didn't we didn't lock ourselves away for like three years and just make the game and like come out of it and be like, oh, that's a cool game, Subnautica. Oh, that's a cool game, Factorio. Mm -hmm. Like the Factorio and Subnautica were, I think, I believe, massive inspirations. Yeah. For us and like how things are. Uh, the the video game community is a small one, yeah, and we learn from our peers. Here, here's a little anecdote, just to kind of let's let's put a button on this part of the conversation. But an anecdote mm -hmm. is, um, we were in San Francisco two years ago, uh, and we were I guess the easiest way to say is we were we were shopping around Astroneer, but really we were just we were shopping around to sell it. We were, we wanted to uh find an investment so we could like quit our jobs and work on this thing full time this is when we were all still in, in the triple a space and i can i can distinctly remember going to gdc and we were all back at our airbnb that we had and uh i know jacob was 100 percent, and i think brendan uh they were playing uh factorio and it was this little scrappy game at the time um, that had a lot of automation and there was a lot of like rail stuff and all this kind of cool shit going on that was like holy shit like it's so like there's certain feelings that come from games like that that if it's applicable to the our baby to Astroneer we want we're not gonna like I'm not saying we're stealing ideas but we're we want to we want to take that emotion that we're feeling and that sort of like uh, those feelings when you outwit a game and you take the systems and you outwit it to get the product that you want or the, the results that you want out of it that's the things that we enjoy so Factorio is just an example of that. No Man's Sky is another example. All these other games that aren't even space, like I said, the Long Dark, uh, Subnautica, things like that. Like these are all games that we pull inspiration from, good or bad, uh, or negative or positive, uh, and act on it. And um, yeah, I just wanted I just wanted to touch on that because we get asked like a lot of questions about that kind of stuff, and it always kind of just leaves a bad taste in my mouth because um, we support our industry. We don't we don't put anybody down. Yeah. Okay. Back to modeling. Yes, I am still modeling. I'm. Uh, I do so much talking. It's kind of. I'm still kind of still kind of laughing when I said I wanted to take a moment to, to talk about something and then the music like stopped. <laughs> like I was gonna make some big grandiose. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I was gonna start monologuing. Confession time. Mm. Uh, I haven't played Factorio yet. Uh, I. I want to recommend Factorio, but you know what I've been playing recently that's really kind of makes me jealous that we didn't get to do it first was. Um, uh, Rimworld, holy shit, that game! I bought that. You gotta, um, you gotta watch. I, I found I had to watch a couple of YouTube videos of people playing it to figure out what the hell I was doing because I didn't, I didn't uh, get along, get on with the tutorial too much. But dude, that game is, that game is special. Holy shit, is that game special? You got, I, I would say, I mean, Factorio, look at that because they do a lot of cool stuff with automation, which I know uh, Jay's excited about. But just from mm -hmm. a pure like, you gotta play this because I think it's a special game. Uh, is Rimworld? <laughs> Yeah, so RimWorld and Factorio are both on my list, mm -hmm. but dumb thing is, I just like I just redownloaded Stardew Valley again, and I'm playing that. Oh yeah, you know, so Stardew Valley, uh, uh, is one of my favorite games to come out for the reason that I can almost treat it like a clicker game, where I could just have it running in the background, and anytime I want to take a little five or ten minute uh, distraction from the work I'm doing, I could just go back to Stardew Valley and like uh, tend to my farm. Uh, you know flirt with one of the villagers that I'm crushing on pretty bad uh, and I like that I could just sort of go back I can pause it it can run into a small window which I, th I love when games do that um, and uh, yeah 
Yeah, Stardew Valley, man. Jeez Louise. So, yeah, I Stardew Valley was like that thing that... I, I played the heck out of uh, Harvest Moon 64. Yeah. Oh, before. yeah. Oh, yeah. And like two years ago... Um, man, two years ago, I was like, man, I wish there was another Harvest Moon game. And I tried to look up if there was anything like that, and there wasn't. And then like Stardew Valley coming out like what 10 months ago was like the best thing ever uh -huh. so now i'm like back to back to replaying it but i i have like way too many games to play. <laughs> uh so i'm gonna do something so i'm ready to move on to start destroying this thing uh in the sake of time i'm not going to do the whole thing we're just going to do a segment but i'm going to do the most exciting segment so part of my process is i've got it in a spot where i'm pretty happy you know here it is it's nice and big um which is which is always a good sign. And actually, what I might oh, actually, I kind of already did it. But what I might do is just get it in the game, just so we can kind of run around and just see how big it is. Um, but I've got it in a point where I'm happy with it, and I think once I destroy it, it'll look even better. So what I usually do is I'm gonna take it, and I'm going to throw it over here with this other guy. Oops. I'll throw it over here. Uh, I'm gonna push that out there. And what I'll do is I'm gonna save. Um, and I'm just going to grab the parts that I want. So I don't want any of these greebles. These are just here for me to sort of reference and, and work on. Uh, but I'm going to grab all of this stuff right here. And this is the intact version. I'm just going to drag it over and duplicate it. So now I've got a duplication. Um, so in Max, when you duplicate things, and this is going to get a little bit technical, so I'll try not to bore you too much. But if I copy it, it's just a straight copy. It's, you know, here's this stuff. Here's a copy of it. Pretty straightforward. However, if I instance it, and I'll just show you that really quickly. Um, now when I work on this thing, if I grab this vert, you'll see on the left side, it's doing the same thing. Um, and I don't want to work that way because I'm going to start destroying this thing and, um, I, I can't have the intact version being destroyed. So I'm just going to do a copy. Uh, and a reference is kind of the same idea. Uh, but a reference will will only pay attention to it at, at the poly level. So if I start adding modifiers, modifiers are things like if I want to like twist it or bend it, things like that. Um, the modifier uh, will not replicate back over the instance, but the the individual little polygonal changes that I make will. I think that's a good way of explaining it. Okay, so I've got I've got this ship. To me, in my mind, it's broken up into four chunks. It's this little piece here where you can see my marquee selection is around it. Then it's this little module here, which I still... Oh, actually, I'm going to break that up before I do this. Okay, let's do that really quickly. I'm going to split it right down the middle here. Uh, and I'm going to take all of this. Uh, let's see. How do I want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to take all of this. And I'm going to detach it. So it's no longer part of the same object. And now I'm going to take all of this and do the same. Detach that. So now, and now I'm going to, so now there's three pieces. One, two, three. I'm going to attach three and two together. So now I've got this little guy over here and we've got this little guy over here. And that's how I want it broken up. So now I'm just going to really quickly cap these things. And I'm just going to make it kind of look spacey. So just so you guys know, I do work from reference, uh, but I've been looking at these things long enough that I'm kind of confident that these will at least look somewhat space module-ish enough to, again, fulfill that fantasy, which is very important. Uh, oops, let's just do this, and then one more. And then cap it. Uh, maybe I'll bring it in. Uh, out, in, out, let me see. Let's go out. I don't think we do out anywhere else. Um, and, and if I look, see how it's all faceted. So you can see all these little uh, edges here. You can see it all around here. I got to smooth that really quickly. So I'm going to take this one, this edge, and this edge, which are all part of the, those, those, these areas here. We can see that it's faceted. And I'm going to do a quick ring selection. And uh, now I realize we're not talking about Astroneer, but I, I think that's okay. I think people want to see some some development stuff through here. So let me let me fly. Let's see. This. This, this is this is fascinating. Keep going. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate the difference here. So in, in Max, and maybe this is applicable elsewhere, I don't, I don't know. I'll be honest and say I don't really care. But uh, there's two ways of selecting. So if I select this edge right here, which you can... Let me... Uh, there we go. So this red edge. Um, if I go ahead and do a ring selection, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this. So you can kind of picture it like a ring, like a ring that you put on your finger. 
it does it that way. Now there's a loop selection where if I select this one and I do a loop, uh, it goes along the length side of the, the edge. So it selects the loop that goes all the way around. But if I were to select that same one and do a ring selection, oops, you'll see it goes along the uh, width way of it. Um, and that's what I'm doing over here. So if I now take this and I select this edge, this edge, and this edge, and do a ring selection, I will select those offending uh, faces and I'm going to add them to a smoothing group. Um, so I'm gonna, again, I'm just going to show the before and after. So, so there's the before. Not smooth at all. Go back to our faces. I'm going to smooth them really quickly. And now you'll see that they sort of all come together nicely. I've got a few more in here to do. Hey, Adam, while you're doing that, mm -hmm. can you answer Riven's question? Why are you not worried about poly count? Um, if he's asking sort of why am I not checking my poly count a lot, it's I guess I just have confidence that what I'm doing isn't so detailed that it's going to chug the game. Um, also, these guys aren't used a lot of – aren't used um, in high density. So you'll usually only have one or maybe two on your screen at a time, preferably only one. And that means that I can spend a little bit more on it. And we're also going to optimize it and do LOD. And LOD stands for level of detail. So uh, usually an asset in the game will have two or three levels of this. So the further away, you kind of crunches down to a lower poly version of itself. I'll end up doing that later. Um, so I'm not too, too worried about that. And I know that the decisions I'm making aren't crazy high detailed. Um, now, anytime you work with a round surface, especially anything that's cylindrical or anything that's a, a spherical, uh, your triangle count is going to go through the roof anyway, especially if you're not careful. Um, and I've just sort of taken time to sort of do some tests early on. I've been working on the, on the art for this game now for about three years uh, off and on. So I kind of have an understanding of where the fidelity lies. Um, and if I fly over and look at some of the stuff that's already in the game, you can see even here, it's it's got some detail on it as well, especially when I break it up, right? Like it's got a lot of uh, edge rings and edge loops or edges to it. Um, and, and this one, I actually taken it a bit further and I've added a bit more detail. Um, but I'm still not going too crazy. And I think the thing to keep in mind is the scale. So this looks like if I hide it, it looks like it's crazy detailed. But if we actually look at it from a scale point of view, if I find the Astroneer, you know, here it is in game. Oops. Um, it's massive, right? So it's not going to be that detailed. And, you know, maybe I could do things like chop this down. Actually, I probably should just say fuck it and do that anyway. Um, I could chop these things down and uh, I, I'll know that they'll be they'll be pretty good. So I've now got these things separated. Uh, oops, did I do? Okay, this is done. So I quickly just need to get some different color on there. Uh, who, who asked that question? Riven? Somebody named Riven? Uh, yeah, Riven. Uh, Riven, if that answers your question, let me know. Um, and uh, I hope it does. Uh, another one I keep seeing, because you're talking about poly count and performance, uh, I think a lot of people are re -asked. So, it, yeah, it's it's been an hour and a half. So the, we, we talked about performance a while, but that's something we're actively working on. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I mean, Brennan and Zabir are like active, like we're probably literally working on it right now. Oh, that they are one hundred percent. They are one hundred percent working yeah. on it as we're doing this. Yeah, and it's it's definitely one of the highest priority things. Like our our first priority was like making sure people could play the game, just play the game at all, right? Like crashes and whatever. And I, I, we're still working on some of those, but like the highest priority ones are gone. And so now it's like our priority levels are, are there's a, a few things going on, but one of them is definitely get performance right and. And that segues into another question, which was about dedicated servers, ETA. We don't really have an ETA for that, but to get, obviously if you play four player co-op right now, it's it chugs a little bit because that's the CPU of the server is taking up a lot of the physics load. And mm -hmm. again, I'm not a programmer, so don't take this word for word, but yeah, so that's, it's uh, there's a bunch of things that we have to get right before we can move on to performance is certainly one of the highest priority items for us. Yeah, and there's not much, I mean, there's not much uh, anybody on the content side can do to drastically improve performance uh, short of like, you know, making things a little less, uh, lower, lowering their poly, their polygon count or their triangle count, depending on, on who you're talking to. Um, yeah. And things like that. But like those, those changes, especially on an asset that is like this, where you're not going to see a lot of them uh, on your screen at a time, those are going to, the, the results are going to be negligible. Um and a lot of the performance is coming from the stuff that like Zabir and Brendan are doing. Those are those are the engineers on the project. They are they are interfacing directly with the engine so that 
uh, the way the content is being shown and um, displayed is more as efficient as possible. And that's sort of the stuff that they're that they're working on right now. So we have people that are working on uh, the uh, performance and the stability of the of the engine, uh, and we have people that are working on content, and we have and everybody's sort of aware of both sides of it. So we know that you know the people, the engineers that are doing the um, optimization. They are aware that additional content is needed for the game, so we have to be able to support that while still running. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, on the flip side, people like myself, I am fully aware of the fact that our game needs to run better. And so I just make sure that the decisions that I'm making on this content aren't going to like undo all the shit that, excuse me, all the work that um, people like Brandon and Zabir are, are busting their asses on right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ambrosia asks, are you using almost exact measurements or a human for scale eyeball and the rest suffice? Well, you have a T-posed astroneer somewhere in that, in that world. I think that's what you're mainly using for scale. Yeah, so I, 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 use, I use it for scale. The good news is, too, is with especially with this art style, I find that um, it scales very well. So if I need to, and let me show you an example really quickly. Just let me uh, wrap this up. But it scales very well. So I can take liberty, and once I get into the game, if I need to nudge it by 30% one way or the other, I think I think it ends up being okay. Um, so I am worried about scale, but especially with these big guys, not I'm not overly concerned with it. It is still a thing that's on my radar 100%. Um, but it's not something that I sort of hum and haw over too much. It, it, it gets that way when I've got too many materials on it that I have to think about being uh, more efficient with. Um, oops. Da -da. Oops, where's my oops? There we go. Uh, da -da. It gets that way when we start thinking about, like I said, materials, material complexity, which is a big deal. Um, uh, that's when I start worrying about those things. But I like, like I know the shaders that are going on this are already being loaded in the game for all the other stuff. Uh, this, the shaders that I use on this are the same ones that we use on the modules that end up being kind of the same ones that we use on the Astroneer. So I know that I'm not going to be taking up more uh, material um, uh, performance real estate. Um, I'm just going to be worried about the the, the the triangles and stuff like that. But even these days, triangles are kind of less of an issue because video cards are so amazing at it. Um, and I know a programmer listening to this is going to be like, but... And of course, there's always going to be hedge cases for all this kind of stuff. Um, but in, in terms of this particular asset, uh, I'm not too stressed over it because I know it's used sparingly. I know it's massive, so it's okay to have this kind of detail. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Oh, shit. Oh, look at this. Oh, God, I'm just a garbage artist. There's a giant... All right. All right. What, what the hell happened here? What's going on here? You just made a camera lens. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, I gotta grab this. Y axis snap. Uh, what <laughs> happened? Okay, hang on. I gotta fix this really quickly. <laughs> Alright, why are you working on that? Uh, Redist, do you guys work where they live or have an actual building? If that, it's not crazy how well you guys communicate with such such a distance. Yeah, Adam and I are both working out of our home offices. Uh, I'm just up in a loft space. In my apartment in Seattle and, or Salt Lake, and Adam is in Toronto in the the basement of your your house, right? Mm -hmm. I think you're in the basement. Yep. Uh, the other guys, um, uh, Paul, Jacob, Brennan, and Zavir, all work out of a complex called WeWork, which is like a co-op space that you can rent, like a little little small claustrophobic room. Um, uh, yeah, in, in Seattle, so that's where those three work and kind of communicate. And uh, it's been an interesting process that. Um, I mean, we, we, for, for the longest time, we were just working on nights and weekends, but then when all of us went full-time on it, it was still reliant on, honestly, Slack is why the game exists. Yeah. That's, like, I should be sponsored by Slack because of that, saying that. But, like, literally, I think Adam <clears throat> knew someone from Ubisoft that this is, like, right when Slack became a thing. It was actually, like, uh, existed. From, it was actually from Polycat when we were running Polycat. Oh, it was Polycom. Okay, yeah. so that was Ubisoft. And like we were just doing our own personal emails, and oh my god, that was like the worst way to communicate. It was, ter it was terrible. We were gonna like like we were gonna start, we were gonna start like a V bulletin PHBB board to like talk as a group. Fuck, it was awful. And then uh, and then yeah, um, shout out to Seth Thomas, <laughs> one of my uh, homies from Polycom. Uh, he's usually on the ball with with new tech that comes out and. Uh, 
suggested Slack, and that changed our goddamn lives overnight. Yeah. I don't think yeah, we've sent I, email we, to each other in two years now. Yeah, we don't communicate through email. We just use Slack. Uh, that that was probably like, or that was really early on the project. So probably maybe two and a half years ago that yeah. we switched to Slack. Um, and yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I just want to do another really, because now I'm ready to, to move on to the next step. Okay, so. Uh, I've got the space station set up. I'm pretty happy with it. I've closed off the ends for the parts I'm going to need. If we need to visualize it really carefully, really quickly, I see it as being four parts. There's one part there, two parts there, three part there, and then this is the fourth part. So what I want to do is I want to take this guy and we're going to break it up. We're going to put it in the game. And... Uh, and uh, it's going to be wreckage. And I'm actually going to make a couple pieces out of it so, so I can get as much from this as I can. So I'm going to save. Now what I'm going to do is just take this guy. And we're going to duplicate it out here. Uh, copy it. I'm going to convert it. I'm going to... Oh, shit. Should I have done that? Let me think. Let me think. Hang on. Uh, I may not want to okay starting over grabbing it and I'm gonna explain what I what I just sort of had a little crisis about in my head so there's a thing that we do oh, what the hell where did that come from oh no god you know I'm an idiot I can't I can't walk and chew gum at the same time apparently I can't talk and work at the same time because Okay, one second here. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, I'm going to hide that shit. Okay, yeah. You guys get the hell out of here. Uh, okay, maybe I'm just being dramatic and it's not that bad. Okay, yeah. Just being dramatic, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so the thing I was racking my brain on ahead of time is... So I've got all these Greebles over here. Um... I guess the second I make it... Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess I, I guess I was definitely overreacting. So I've got all these Greebles over here. So if I grab these things... Is there any on here? No, it's not. Which one is it? Is it here? So I've got this guy here. This little Geosphere. Um, and you can see I've got them on there. And what I was racking my brain on is I converted it to a working a way of working that kills this sort of connect this instance connection. You can see how as, as, if I, as I do in the background. You can even see it happening way on the back one there over there. The way I copied it, though, which is to convert it to an editable poly, is the second I do that, which I just did, if I grab those vertices again, vertex again, uh, you'll see now I don't get that. And that's that's kind of okay. I was kind of like thinking maybe I don't want to do that this early, but I'm going to say, fuck it. Let's do it. Um, so one thing before I move on is how do you guys like... Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. I was going to say, I you know, we could do different... We could do different um, arrangements where it's like this if we want to be like it's totally peacocking it's like hey i'm a dramatic looking space station flying through the sky that's kind of crazy maybe crazy is cool uh but but we don't need to worry about that because we're just gonna end up destroying it anyway so let's let's fuck this guy up so yeah riley i'm gonna work on this one do you think that's a good one to start on yeah, I like, yeah it. I, I, like, I like it. I like it. I like it in the same vein that I like this one, because uh, you can kind of always see it from the background, uh, from mm -hmm. a distance. And I think with like the shapes that are going on here, plus we get an interior, I think it's going to kind of do a lot of good good for us. So, um, I just want to quickly load up my Pinterest board, and I'm going to switch over to a place where I can share that. Fly over here. Uh, should be Pinterest. I just want to quickly look at the references I have to see if I've got anything that's going to spark my imagination for how to destroy these. Of course, I'm not going to find any wreckage of destroyed modules because they don't share that. Um, 
but there might just be like little things I could see in terms of really interesting shapes. Like I love this one. This is I mean this is somebody's con uh, this is somebody's concept I think. Like I love this kind of stuff that maybe we could work it into. Um Uh, it's the cupola module from the International Space Station, which is really kind of cool. Yeah, I guess I guess I gotta being a little bit redundant. There's not much here. Let me see what happens if I do. Mm, uh, I doubt I'm gonna get anything from it, but aerospace wreck. Oh, yeah. I guess we're gonna get a lot of a lot of plane stuff. So they just kind of break off in little chunks. You know, our, you know the the modules. If we go back and look at the modules, they're sort of uh, they're in panels, which I which I like to sort of like, especially if you look here. Um, hopefully, this is the nice big one that I like. Where is it? Oh, come on! So you can see these sort of panels. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop a couple of those off. It'll be kind of cool. We'll do a nice little interior for it. Uh, okay, close. Okay, so this is the destroyed version. So I know I spent time on this thing, but now I'm gonna. Now I'm going to destroy it. So we're going to do this piece here. Detach. Uh, yeah, sorry, Riley. You can, we can start talking again. No, no, no. no. Just, now, yeah. now that I figure this stuff out. All right. I, uh, back to looking to question. It's, well, some flinker AB. Yes. What about platform for storage only? It'd be good to have, like, basically to hold storage. Like a like a like a, like a drive. base module that you print and then it's just storage. Yeah, like one that doesn't have anything on it. Uh, that that's actually something that comes up a lot as a suggestion. Um, I think I talked to Jake about it once because I want, I just was giving him that feedback. Yeah, but you I can kind of. I mean, said. I guess the argument, and I don't I don't want to debate it because I think it's a good idea. But I think you can kind of do that in the game already, right? Like when you build a node, and mm -hmm. you, you you know the thing comes out, you have your you have your dropship. This is what I would do anyway. Uh, whether or not Jay loves this idea and he ends up doing it is whatever, but you can kind of do it already where if you have your dropship, you put the resin on it, the node comes out. Uh, when that goes to a two slot, you can actually decide to put a storage rack on there instead. And now you've got a, now you've got an eight slot storage node anyway. So you can kind of do that in the game as it is. Totally. I think I, I'm guessing I'm, a, I'm going to talk to for uh, about other people. I would guess that they want like to be able to stick like six storage racks yeah, on one yeah. little platform. Yeah, I get that. And that's, that's, you know, maybe maybe there's an idea in there in the future where the the modules are supported on the uh, excuse me the the nodes support the large storage rack, mm -hmm. um, but I think I think it's just that's just sort of how that stuff is going to evolve anyway, right? Like we don't want to yeah we, we try not to do explicit uh, uh, modules like that like a like a storage thing. I think we'd rather just people kind of um, if I can steal from the Martian again, kind of science the shit out of the things we have. Yeah. Um, so that they can kind of do that on their own. Um, I know that's not what that that individual that asked that question is looking for, um, but I think there's there's solutions to that already in the game. And then for sure, I think you'll just see stuff like that come online naturally as the game as the game builds. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's actually one I definitely see a lot of, like just people wanting. I think it's just an organization thing. Like yeah. there's people are like making these really nice clean bases and it's like wow that's nice mm -hmm. <laughs> it's way better than mine look um so yeah i think i think that's like who knows mm -hmm. uh jacob is the only one that can answer it adam and i are not the right people to but that is a a quality suggestion and one that actually my sister also made to me oh she, really like, was playing the game. oh yeah she's like that's i think the two things that she like mentioned and like she's not doesn't play video games at all so it's impressive that she was playing Astroneer, like I think she played 11 hours of Astroneer, which is like the most I think wow. she's ever played a video game. Um, she was like, all, the two things she wanted was back, this is back before we launched, but uh, she wanted a storage space for all of her gear, all of her gubs. And she wanted to, she flew away from her home base and couldn't get land back onto it mm. because this is before we had a functionality where you could just land right back at your landing mm -hmm, pad mm -hmm. or launch pad. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I, one of those came for fruition, so maybe it yep. should be two out of two on suggestions. Um, ooh, here's a good one. Hammer for one 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 four again. Uh, will we get a longer power tube things? It'll be easier instead of making notes every few feet. I oh, I see the, con the that, conduits. Uh, the, I think I think Jake yep. calls those conduits. Yeah. 
Yeah, conduits. So I actually had coffee with Jacob over the, um, I don't know, seven days ago and talked exclusively about it because that's a thing of mine too. I like, and yeah, it, it's it's being talked about. I, I, that's all I'm going to say because I don't know really what he's direction he's going to take. Mm-hmm. But it, if it's in like anything else, it'll be cool mm-hmm. and have a really cool UX and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in not air 404 speaking of martian why is your game so unreal uh, leave a planet in a car seat without using duct tape and a plastic cover <laughs> we gotta work on that uh no that's totally realistic in fact i think chris fatfield did that recently where he got into a, a chair and flew around space I think he's talking about leaving a planet yeah. into space. Yeah, I'm just being an asshole right now uh, and trying to make a joke that's not going anywhere. It's just saying that astronauts totally get into empty chairs and then fly around space all the time. That's just how s- science works. <laughs> but this, this is a shitty joke, and I should just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to modeling. Yeah, fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, ooh, uh, Caseman, uh, adding on to the condo, ideas for implementation of some sort of rail transport system. Um, not, again, not the designer on the team, and only speaking what Jacob has talked about publicly. But yes, that actually, at some point, was in the game some sort of rudimentary rail system, and that's going to get brought back. It, it got cut because it wasn't quite there yet, mm. um, but not cut in a bad way of like never going to show up again. It'll ideally come back that you can automate things again like we talked about earlier uh, factory was big inspiration early on mm-hmm. of the automations and conveyor belt thingies and i mean we had who knows where that goes yeah you know. like we had it in the gdc build it's a thing that we've all loved it's it's been mm-hmm. part of the conversation since day one um yeah. yeah i think i think i think we'll so do. it's it's not there yet but it's not like gone mm-hmm. it, it'll you'll see it again in an mm-hmm. update mm-hmm because rails are cool they're just a little buggy uh, yeah we had a few things like that were pulled out last minute just because there wasn't enough time to like make it to the quality bar that we wanted to uh, so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, speaking of launch pad vehicle thing uh, could we get an actual launch pad just so when there's more vehicle things it won't land on a rover uh, that's probably a good idea I'll pass that along. They don't want Again. launch. They don't want shuttles to land on rovers. Yeah, well, you guys are so entitled with your suggestions. Jeez, Jeez. no, screw it. Shuttles are always going to land on rovers. We're going to double down on it. And the only place you can ever land on is a rover. Whoever asked that question just ruined it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Not a spite. That's all the game is going to be. Yeah. We're building this game out of spite now. Oh, uh, someone said the biggest German YouTuber is streaming the game right now. It's a uh, man. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's like Gronk H. He has 31,000 viewers. That's way more than us. There's 31,000 people watching. watching... Else. Yeah, guy, come on. Does this guy not know that we're we're streaming right now? Yeah, we, we had scheduled this oh, this man. time frame. Dude, I thought I thought we were big in Germany already, man. Come on. Uh, we're pretty decent in Germany. Right, we're not. We're not doing a good job here. Okay, I gotta keep breaking this thing up. Yeah. Keep breaking it down. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Uh... Nelson. Oh man, Max two two one two one. I don't know how to answer that question. What, what's the question? The question is: I noticed on multiplayer for the host, the LOD increases with within the client's radius as well. Is this a is this by practice? So planets modifications are saved, or do you oh, are you yeah. able to remove this? Oh, um, yeah, you're yeah. asking the yeah wrong if, if wrong your, yeah wrong stream. You get the trifecta of like people that you cannot ask that question and have an answer. Um, 
that's that. I know that there's a difference between LOD of client and host, but I'm not sure if that was just there or what. Or yeah, yeah I'm gonna stop talking about that one. So let's uh, uh, ask let's take, that let's, another let's, time. Let's take those ones and just throw people at Jacob's Twitter account. Or yeah, or... everyone just spam Jacob and Brennan's Twitter account. Yeah. Speaking of Twitter, I am, I'm a little upset. Brennan passed me on Twitter followers, like a, a couple weeks ago. So I'm the fourth. I'm fourth place. Actually, no, sorry, I'm I'm in fifth place. Sorry, man. So uh, just a shout, a little plug. Follow <laughs> at Riley Gravatt right now. <laughs> get, get get me up to Jacob Leaky levels, please. I, I I won't spam you with content. I hardly I, I hardly tweet, so it, it won't mean anything. So this is all just to serve your giant inflating ego, right? Yeah. I mean, at, when, when before, like six months ago, I had more followers than Jacob and Brennan combined. And look where it's at now. Sorry, man. Oh, well. Maybe if you tweeted harder. I, I know. I, I tried for a week and it didn't work out. I don't care to tweet. So actually, if, if you want to have really good retweets with, follow me. If not, probably don't follow me. Uh. Oh man, there's a lot of good questions, but none that like are really. I think that Adam and I are the best to answer. Like if Jacob was in here, I'd throw them over to him. But uh. Oh, man. Well, that just means we'll that. have to get Jacob on the next one. He can, he can, yeah. He can. Uh... I guess the question is, do you want him working on content, or do you want to talk to him? Yeah. That's that's the tough thing with the. I don't know. I mean, Adam's probably the best person to talk about the community management stuff. It's, it's, it's been. I mean, we have a lot of people playing the game, mm -hmm. and a, a, a lot of people interested in the game, and it's hard to keep up. Emails um twitter like doing this twitch stream like it's there and forums and all this stuff that uh man yeah it's 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 hard to do your normal job and also be engaged in the community and like i mean adam's probably hit the hardest by that but it's we want to reach out to people as much as possible and like communicate it but, but at the same time it's like there's there's work to be done as well yeah yeah it's a tough it's a tough uh it's a tough balance, especially because uh, my favorite games that have been in development are the ones where the developers speak. So I try to I speak to the community directly, and I try to put that into practice. But I've also got shit to make, and I've been kind of been working on this this station now for over four weeks, and I'm not nearly far enough along for it. I mean, Christmas came along, and there was New Year's and all that kind of shit, and I've been working on the stuff. But had I not have been doing community engagement. Uh, you know, we would have been further along, but it, those things are so important to us. So, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something stupid here, and just to kind of speed this up, see if I can make it work. Um, you know, I, hey, while we're while we're talking about community stuff, uh, super quick shout out to our moderators, uh, Wyverius, uh, the man who never sleeps. Um. Is killing it. Uh, pay no attention. I love that man to death. Uh, we had a really good conversation when I first met him. That really impressed me. So I'm happy that uh, he's also on our team. Mm -hmm. and, code uh, perfect the, the Reddit. Yeah, code code perfect. That's uh, whatever that black and white circle thing is. You know, that people seem to love. That I don't know how they find it. It's in our game or whatever. Um, it's like some weird glitch, I think. Yeah, I think they call it like the giraffe ball or the rhinoceros ball or something like that. Um, um, uh, you know, he, uh, Code Perfect is the guy that set that up as the upvote and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, shout out to him. We've got two new people coming on uh, to help us out with that. So that's been good. What, what are these people saying? It's the zebra ball. All praise zebra ball. Zebra ball, zebra. Um, I don't know, guys. I think you're. Don't know. Zebra ball. Hmm. I have to look into that. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, no, Mr. Bond. Well, uh, top 100. Your community relationship continue, continue, continues to stay positive. Uh, Adam, I definitely agree, and I'm, the rest of the team agrees. So any time that, I mean, uh, Adam's probably best to talk about that. But yeah, like we want to be connected with you guys as much as possible. That's kind of where this, this stream comes from, all, all of our previous streams, and how much we want to keep engaging with you guys pulling your suggestions, feedback of the game, and just kind of grow together, basically, right? Like, I mean, heck, the, the opening thing of the screen talks about how we want to make the game with you guys. So mm -hmm. we are very intent on that. Yeah, that's not that's not developer bullshit where we're trying to be like, hey, we're all in this together, guys. Like, uh, just to get real for a moment, like, in a, uh, emotionally, I want to swear, but like, we're, we're, we're there's only fucking six of us working on this game. So we need... We need the community involvement here so that we can keep steering the ship in the right direction. And that's as truthful as I can be about this, is that Astroneer depends on this kind of development style. And the glue to that whole thing is our transparency with you guys. So uh, the things that we're failing on, the things that we're doing really well on, the things that the community are reacting to, those are the things we're going to keep talking about. And that is all true. Um, and... Uh, you know, like I said, the game is in pre-alpha, uh, pre so it's still broken. Like, it's incomplete. There's bugs. There's crashes. You can't name save files. You can't delete save files from the game. Um, you know, multiplayer is janky as shit. There's, there's the, the rovers that fly around, and people can get, in, can get into seats and fly around. Like, all that stuff is going to get improved. And these are all the things that you guys, by playing it, are exposing us to. Um, now, again, because there's six of us, uh, the turnaround won't be as fast as if we were a team with 30 or 40 people. Um, and that, that's not even our aspiration to get that big at all. Um, in fact, I think we only we only really want to bring on a, a small handful of additional people to support us because we we think that that is the perfect size, you know, six plus let's say three, let's say ten people total working on Astroneer. That's mm -hmm. our goal um, because we're not, you know, even when this game is out of early access and in 1.0, that community engagement is super. Um, I keep I, I'm normally a person that swears a lot when I talk, so I'm really trying to watch my tongue here. But just emotionally. We're, it's super important to us uh, um, to, to be a part of that process. And, 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 and that's why, it's like I said, it's not there at the beginning to kind of wax poetic and be all chummy chummy and like, hey, we're in this together. It's like, this is how we have to build a fucking game. And and we just need it to be there all the way through. So that's why we, we chat about, about it a lot. Um, I do a lot of stuff through my own Twitter about this kind of stuff. Um, and we'll continue to do that, to do that. And, and the support that you guys have given us both financially by actually buying the game, uh, critically by, by the reviews that you've left on steam, both negative and positive. Uh, we learn from, uh, the comments that you guys are leaving in the steam forums, the system era forum. Uh, those are all super helpful to us. And I know, uh, everybody's writing stuff and you're not seeing replies from us. Um, but we get eyes on and understand pretty much all of it. And I promise you that. That's where the moderators come in because they share stuff with us. That's where I come in because I'm, I'm everywhere. Um, we just don't have t enough time in the day to actually respond to it. But we are seeing it all and getting a really good eye. And, um, uh, you know, I think I think from the team's half, I have to thank you guys for that because that's super, like, useful to us and important to this process. And, um, yeah, I just I just wanted to say that. that like, that it's very deliberate. Uh, it's not marketing bullshit. Um and uh, it's working like our game is all yeah. the day the game came out it was already better the first patch that we fucking released sorry i'm getting really, really <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting really amped up and really getting getting really amped up on this but like the game is all like the first patch we put out the game is already better and that, that just sounds like i'm just being stupid and like of course it's better because it's patched out but it's it's things that we worked on that we never planned to work on and fix and that's just coming from you guys giving us that feedback so we really appreciate it um mm -hmm. And yeah. And, and yeah, and just to reiterate, like, we're right now only six people, and six people in games about it can do a lot because they're unrestrained by a ton of other things. But it's also sometimes can be slow going and hard for us to do everything at once like that we want to do. So there, there is a little bit of time that needs to be taken because, like, I mean, Adam at Ubisoft probably worked that with 600 people, maybe a thousand on his last game that mm -hmm. he was there. And then I, I think the last game I worked on had roughly 700 people working on it so obviously that's a those are quite different numbers right yeah um, 
And now we've got six, but, and we're trying to build a game that is offering the kind of um, compelling gameplay. As you know, we're trying to we're trying to we want we we all play these games ourselves, and we're trying to build something that is in that realm, and that's why this early access process is super important to us. And yeah, um, yeah. So we we need we need the community involvement. It's very important to us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and but yeah, just also the reader, be patient with some of these things. We're yeah. we're working as fast as possible and be healthy as possible. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it sometimes it takes time, and that's where we have to like make priorities because the most valuable thing with a small team is your time and management of it, and that's obviously just that's why we can't like do all the suggestions at once. They're all, they're all fantastic suggestions, but it's something that we. Like we either do optimization or do like make the UI better or make things. Yeah, there's there's only so many many hours in a day, and just every every little feature takes more time than you probably realize. Yeah. Um, so it's it's all on our list. It's just it's a matter when we get to it. Uh, so yeah. I feel like we talked a lot about that. I hope I hope the chat is reacting in a nice way about it. Yeah, no, it, well, oh, uh, actually, there's a, uh, let me talk about that really quickly. Oh, dude, I'm not. Oh, Mr. Z, Mr. Zebra Smoothie. Uh, do you ever plan on posting jobs? Yes, we do. Look for those sooner than later, my friend. Um, uh, just another one really quickly. Uh, St. Kelly, uh, me and you, Riley, uh, this person saying, please don't burn out. I see you pushing all these patches. Uh, even uh, right near Christmas, uh, make sure you're sleeping, don't uh, doing self care, etc. Uh, first of all, thank you. That means a lot when yeah. we hear that kind of stuff. Um, and we all actually do do this really well. So, um, like I said, I work from home and I put in I put in eight hours, but maybe spread over like a ten or eleven hour period. Um, I still get to see my kids. I think I see my wife. So uh, we do we do. It seems like uh, we push a lot, and we do. We definitely do. Like I work I work seven days a week. Um, but we do take the time to, to have a social life and see our friends and family and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, Astroneer is like so precious to us and our baby that we need to make sure that we are supporting it whenever we can. So when we're pushing a, an update on December 29th over the Christmas holidays, um, you know, we're doing it because it's, necess it's, it's, it's a necessity to us personally to support the game for you guys. So uh, I appreciate the sentiment and we do our best with that. But at the same time, um, we're all kind of always working around the clock. Uh, even though there's six of us um, and we're pushing updates not because we feel we need to f uh, from a um, consistency side uh, just because we feel the game needs these updates um, and uh, we'll continue to do that and we will watch our our stress and our energy and our personal lives and do very well with that uh, so thank you so much for, for saying that Uh, okay. Here's a good one from a while back. Uh, Not Dog Air 404. How do you guys handle being so transparent and streaming, making the game while still ensuring that there's plenty of secrets for your find? Uh, just because we haven't told you those secrets. <laughs> that, that's a simple answer. Um, unless Adam showed them accidentally. I showed some, I you know the so. one the one the one I kind of like got nervous about. It's actually it's not that big of a spoiler because I actually don't know if they're ever going to be in the game. It was just these like really old kind of relic -y things that I made like way back um, geez, a while ago. Oh, those things that were in PAX West demo? Uh, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. You know what, fuck it. I'll, I'll just load them up really quickly. You guys can see them. It's these things here. I don't, th I don't think they're, I don't think they'll be used. I think I mostly made them just so Jacob had like weird looking objects to play with. It's these guys right here on my screen. So there's, there's, these aren't really spoilers. They're just, they're just things in the game, and I don't want people to read too much into them because we don't know what we're gonna do with them yet. But I basically just made a bunch of things for Jacob to uh, have objects that look different to play with. Uh, but like I said, I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever use them. Okay, I, actually, I haven't seen those. Yeah, they were like the Genesis. Uh, they were like, I don't actually, I don't even know if this is accurate, but I think they were the Genesis for the research items that we have now. Oh, okay. Yeah, the research went through a couple iterations of yeah. what they were and oh, how you yeah. interacted. With and them. it's so good now. It's so so good. 
Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been an interesting, specifically like a year of, of working on the game where things iterated and, and kind of formed in what they currently are. Mm -hmm. And it'll be even more interesting to see where it goes now. Like, things shift around and like uh, there's probably like a very rare set of people that played uh the game at pax uh east in april of last year and then at pax west but like if you play both those and the current version of the game like i mean the the, the game is the same ish but there's a lot of little things that change that affect the whole foundation of the game yeah and so i think i think we'll see probably more of those where just like light little like brush strokes will will really make a difference in yeah. how the game plays and just like little things. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So I guess the original question though, how, how are we uh, holding secrets um, while being transparent? We just, we don't tell you everything. Yeah, I think, like like I said, we're, I mean, we, all, we just, we're not gonna be completely transparent so that, you know, you guys know everything from the business side and stuff like that. But what, what we'd like to be transparent on is just sort of talking about the game in terms of the stuff that you guys are doing right now and what you might be doing in, you know, the, the, the near future. Um, and, you know, we don't lie. We don't, we're never going to lie, but we might not give you guys the full answer just because we need to have some element of surprise for you guys so you can get excited about things. Um, but... Uh, yeah, we just our, our our approach to transparency is just to share as much as we can that we can, we think is going to get you guys excited, or is going to uh, you know de-stress anybody that may be stressed about some issues that they're having or some ideas that they have about the game. Um, yeah, and just have fun with it. I think that's the biggest thing. Oh, my mic is a little quiet. Is that true? Is my mic quiet on? Uh, is my is my is my mic quiet or is Riley's mic quiet on uh, the uh, the Twitch stream here? <laughs> oh, it's because I keep moving around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I lean back a little bit too, away from so I shouldn't being on that. access. I shouldn't on like... from back here, I think is what they're saying. Oh, okay. You know, I was going to sit really far back and try to use my, my feet with my mouse and keyboard. But uh, I, don't think, I don't think I'll do that. Maybe next time, get a wireless keyboard and mouse and sit all the way back there. Yeah. Little. Uh... Yeah, sorry guys. Here, let me see. If I do this. Is that? Nah, oh, whatever. I'm not gonna fuck with this. Let's just, I'm not gonna try to solve <laughs> let's this. Just, let's just, yeah, let's just, let's get back to destroying this guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, that mic thing caused me to lose my question. Uh, someone's like secrets. I found found this this roadmap. That seems to be enough. Oh shoot! They found the roadmap. That's all of our answers. You know, when I wrote that roadmap and I tweeted about it and posted it publicly, I never thought, I never thought people would find it. Sorry, mm -hmm. that was such an asshole thing to say. I'm sorry, dude, whoever said that. I was just, I was just having fun. Uh, get a mic for your shirt. That's a good idea. Yeah, Riley, get a get a mic get a mic for my shirt. Like a lovelier mic. Yep. Yeah. You can do that. I just saw. Uh, I just saw. You move around a lot with your arms. Yeah, I, I, I'm a hand tucker. I just saw actually Adam Savage has uh, uh, modified glasses, so he can put a uh, one of those mics in, uh, run it through the back of his glasses, and then it hangs just by the um, the. Oh, what the hell are these things? This, this is called not not the glasses arm. It's a. Uh, anyway, he has it hiding in here, so when he does stage shows and stuff like that, it's it's there and it's loud. Which is I thought was kind oh, of that's cool. interesting. Um, more optimization questions, so we might as well answer sure, this again. Let's do it. Yeah, we're absolutely working on optimization, and by we, not Adam and I, Zabir, Jacob, and Brandon are all focused on a bunch of things. But that is one of the top priority mm -hmm. things. And uh, obviously, an artist and a program, or uh, an artist and an audio designer can't really do those things. So that's one reason why we're here talking to you and yeah. not not working on optimization. But yeah, so that's that's one of the focuses. It will get better over and over again, and that's part of the early access process. We wanted to make the game as as great as we could, but there are certain things that obviously don't hit the quality mark right away. And so it was a little weird coming from AAA for all of us to kind of be like, yeah, I guess we'll, we can ship with some of these performance issues. But yeah, we're we're 
actively working on it. It's it's known. It'll improve every every week. It'll improve basically. Um, just just a second. And for those, oh, sorry, sorry, keep going, yeah. keep going. No, keep going. I'll, I'll... Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. And the caveat is like the people that haven't uh, are in the chat right now or stream what listening. If you guys aren't ready for that, just don't buy the game yet. Like, yeah, it'll, it, it's not going anywhere. Like, right? Like, it's we're not gonna stop selling it tomorrow. And like the people that have it only get it right like if, if you want to wait a little bit or not even get it at all because of these issues just don't like it's no big deal yeah i might cry a little bit but i think it'll be okay now why oh that's weird um so i gotta address something that was in the in the slide or in the chat i know these are glass frames but there's a this particular thing right here. This this part has a different name. That's a part of the frame, and they they said it in the in the video I saw uh, with Michael from Vsauce and Adam Savage from Tested. Um, he called it something. I'm trying to remember what that was. Uh, yes, it's a glasses frames. I know I might seem like an idiot, but I at least know that it's a <laughs> lens lens frame. Lenses and frames. Jesus, words words are not my 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 good my good my good part <laughs> uh for example plant how are you guys handling for example to plant a big solar panel so that it won't move? i'm not sure what the question is asking is it meaning that it doesn't move or you want it to be able to like lock it in so it doesn't move uh I, what was the question uh how uh a ANC dicks for the X. Uh, how are you guys handling, for example, to plant quote, quotations and plants a big solar panel so it won't move? Like the guy, the big ones we have, like the wrecked ones. I thought you could just dig, like add terrain, and then they kind of lock in, right? Uh, well, what's the person asking? Like, do they want to be able to take a solar panel and then like move it and then not have it move around after that? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I, I, I don't really know the, what exactly they are. I think there is a bug, though, um, with some of these uh, these decorators or larger wreckage. that, mm. And even, like, the hidden hidden stuff. There's, like, it, there's a bug with, like, load saves where the, the physics get locked. And they don't, they don't, you only get, like, one, like, save. Basically, you have to play it. Once you dig it up, there, there is an issue there. Um, I was going to explore and see like what people were talking about there, but I've seen it. I feel like I've seen it on like a YouTube um, Let's Play where like the person saved the game and came back to it and they couldn't move it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that just that just sounds like a bug. Uh, yeah. The game, the game when it spawns the objects, when you first see it and it's still on the ground and you haven't touched it, that's just the game doing that. That's how it mm -hmm. is by design. You have to use. What happens is. Um, there's a so there's a there's a few parts to every every asset that you see you know you're gonna see the geometry which is what I'm working on now, uh, but you're also gonna see uh, there's a thing called a bounding box which the game just will draw around it automatically we have a little bit of control over that. There's also the collision mesh which is a very simple like if I was to make a collision mesh under this giant uh, stein that I have, oops if I was gonna I'm gonna move my mic here if I was gonna make uh, a collision mesh for this giant stein it would just be a very simple cylinder that would come around it. Um, those all come into play with the terrain system. So once you've sort of uh, removed, um, once you have removed the object from the terrain, uh, usually it's actually the the, the object's collision. Um, that's when the object comes free and it turns into a physics object and it starts sort of bouncing around. And uh, that's actually just a good example of one of those things that'll just you know once we get bells and whistles and we get time for that, those are the kind of things that'll improve, and it's going to get really really fun. You know, one of the things we actually wanted to do early on, we have those giant trees that uh, have the um, uh, the research items in them, one of the organic ones. And, you know, Jacob and I were fantasizing over this idea that those trees would be, would be great if they had like a bendy spline on them so that when they came down, you know, this is the tree. When it comes down, we actually want it to like bend and like, you know, bend. Like if there's a rock on the ground, it would actually like do like that instead of like this and then like how it rolls right now. Um, we actually wanted it to kind of like come down and bend and do some fun stuff. So we have a bunch of shit like that that's planned. Uh, that'll be that'll be pretty exciting. 
but uh, you know, those uh, are the, those are those things much later on when we're sort of thinking about final polish and stuff like that. Uh, all right, I'm going to answer some questions for actually, you, Adam. I, actually, I had, a, I had a question oh. I wanted to ask you that I saw. Uh, Me? Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question that you can answer. Uh, okay. And then I'll chime in with my own answer. But I, sorry, I didn't see who wrote it, but I remember the question I wanted to ask. Um, Riley, what is a challenge that we have faced as independent developers that uh we did not we were not exposed to you as triple a developers so what are some things oh, that we, uh, i mean everything uh, everything man, is a challenge but yeah. let's let, what are some of the big ones that we sort of like uh, we just did not expect spe yeah specifically for me um usually there's like a a little bit more support on on my end where i, I have to handle a lot of random things on my own as a sound designer so usually like so to explain a little bit further like uh, the makeup of a an audio tomorrow usually there's there's an audio director that acts mainly as a producer um communicating with other departments um well i mean you're also communicating with these departments but they're like the funnel in a way um and then there's also usually one or two programmers implementing things for you so uh that that's probably the biggest one is not having an audio programmer to work with and I've had to do a lot of things in the, the blueprints that I usually would just throw it over the fence for a, a programmer to hook up. But mm -hmm. that's, that's the benefit of Unreal, right? Like there's the blueprint system is really great, but I can only get by with it so far. And, and not everything is in blueprint. Sometimes it's uh, in C++ that I, I can't touch. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so either I have to get engineer time that takes away from development of the game. Like usually like, an audio program is only for audio, right? And so if I like have a task for them, it's not going to take away from the quality of the game because mm -hmm. um, that's that, that's their only title. So whenever I do have audio things, so like uh, using an example, um, uh, like the Rover, I don't think sounds that great because partly because it's just hacked in there. Mm -hmm. uh, cause you usually use have multiple sounds playing like loops of engines terrain sound uh like the direction of the wheels and you have all these little dynamic parameters and right now it's basically like speed is the only parameter that's affecting pitch and volume mm -hmm. so it doesn't really sound that great but it it works well enough for now and it was mainly a conscious decision of like all right we're only gonna just get it working because we can either spend multiple days working on this specific one or take more time away from like maybe a feature coming into the game or like a new like new gameplay or like something that Adam needs to be implemented or right like so not having a like a specific program on on in your department is has been tough mm -hmm. um so that's that's the biggest one right because you're working with really large teams over, over 200 people yeah. in triple a um so yeah that's that one uh definitely not having the gear that i'm used to having like the hard the hardware like, so yeah, with all the hardware, like mics, uh, preamps, uh, all the software. Like I'm running a pretty, a really modest audio setup out of my my home studio, and it's not really even a studio. It's it's just a room that has like a couple sound pads in. Uh, so it's not like a specific audio room. Do everything. It's it's, just, it's very it's a, a very modest setup, and yeah, that's cool. th those are fun things to work around though, right? Like you you get challenged creatively. Yeah. I think that's. How about you? I think that's one of the things I like about it is just the sort of that challenge. Um, I guess the, I mean, off the top, the biggest difference is just the amount of hats we wear, and I don't mean yeah, actually the hat I'm wearing and that I wear a bunch of different hats. I just mean we all do everything. Um, you know, when I was at Ubisoft or or Relic before that, I was responsible to like an environment. Uh, when I was an art director, I was responsible to a team. Um, but uh, oh, did I fuck that up? Oh no. Uh, um, and at System Era, um, I'm a business owner. Um, I am. Oh, there's got to be these. Oh, I know how to do this a little easier. Um, sorry, Riley, just one second. No, no, no. Um, I'm a business owner, so I have to do a lot of like the business side that I wasn't necessarily used to. Oh shit! Get out of here! Get out of here! Everybody leave. You, you, you're all good. Okay. Um, so there's that. 
you know, I do a lot of marketing and PR, which I didn't really do at uh, or never did. I was always part of marketing uh, ventures, but I wasn't part of the team making the decisions. Um, so I'm a part of that. Um, you know, I'm I get to talk about engineering stuff that I didn't do and sort of and sort of pose those questions to our team. Same with design, audio. You know, you and I have had conversations about music for our game early mm -hmm. on that, you know, I would be able to say at Ubisoft, but I wouldn't be part of like the decision part of it. And I think that's, that's sort of where that, where that comes from. Um, yeah. And that's not really a challenge in that those things are challenging to think about, but it's a challenge in that it's just things I haven't done before. So it's kind of been fun and it's a really good challenge to have. Um, um, I guess one of the other challenges is just, um, and it, there's a good side and a bad side to this where, you know, if the game does well, that's great. And I feel great. And if the game does bad, uh, sorry, in AAA, this is me talking AAA, I feel great. And if it does bad, I feel, I mean, I feel okay. But like, you know, I, you learn early on not to get attached to the work that you're doing in AAA because it might get deleted and it might not get used. The game might bomb. So you kind of like, you don't take things too personally. Whereas when it's Astroneer, especially with Astroneer, um, where um, at least the original idea came from myself I'm very attached to it and so I take I, I don't think I don't take things personally but I want to make sure that the game is the idea of the game is represented the best way it can be I want to make sure that people are enjoying it for the same reasons that we fell in love with it um, and I think that's the biggest challenge is like you know it's like having a new it's like having a kid and then you know thousands of people are criticizing it um yeah that's so that's, that's a really good movie <laughs> so i think it's just like it's different right like i loved assassin's creed that was one of my favorite games ever i got to work i got to work on it so i got to work on one of my favorite games ever so that, that's a huge accomplishment for me and that i'm very proud of but like when it came out and it was buggy and stuff like i did i wasn't hurt by it i was just sort of like you know shit that sucks but with this one uh the the cheers and the jeers are just amplified and I think that's I think that's the biggest challenging thing that, that we've had to face. Yeah, that's that's a really good point of like I mean, so on Assassin's Creed, like if you want to take your role, it's like one out of six hundred. Right. Yeah. Like that's that's how much like value you or attachment you have to the project as far as like responsibility. And like for this, it's like one in six right now. And yeah. and not counting all the like the other people that we've contracted out. Yeah. Like um both Andrews and um Heather and those people. But yeah, so it just, it's like one out of six it, like you're responsible for yeah probably more and like that like that was probably the biggest nerve-wracking thing was on uh, un, on release yeah of like like people were like giving positive stuff about it no it's not 100 percent positive obviously but yeah. people were giving positive early on i was like oh that's cool but they'd follow the game for a year that that's that's biased yeah well I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow when more people will play it and mm -hmm. like, man the anxiety of that is this is, is brutal yeah, it's brutal. Like, yeah. I don't know what would have happened if Astroneer came out and people were like, eh. <laughs> or uh, like, this is bad. Yeah. I well, I also think that we're, we are uh, seasoned enough that we just would not have, we would, we would have been okay with not releasing it if we kind of felt it was going to get that reaction. And that's sort of where that friends and family beta came in that we did, right? Like, we, we kind of dipped our yeah. toe in the water to see if it was warm or cold and it was hot. And uh, mm -hmm. we knew we knew we had something, so we uh, we felt we felt confident that we could get it out, get it out early, get feedback. You know, people are obviously going to have an issue with the bugs and the crashes, um, but then there's going to be people that understand the kind of game that it is and that it's in early access. Uh, excuse me, that it's a pre-alpha, not just early access, but it's a pre-alpha, and that's like super not finished. Yeah. Um, well, it's those... it's funny. I mean, you were probably you were probably a little bit more confident than me, but man. After I mean, when you play a game for three years, yeah, and you're working on it, and like you you experience all these little small little micro changes, you forget that it's fun. Mm -hmm. And ah uh, man, until I saw people having fun with it, like YouTube let's plays and like Twitch streams, yeah, I, I I wasn't sure if the game was fun. And that's that's one thing I think every everyone in game development goes through is like you kind of forget where the fun is because you're so attached to it, and it's it's really hard to tell sometimes whether a game is good or not until like people start playing it mm -hmm. and that's why like some of the playtesting was super important like you were saying 
So I'm glad you have more confidence in me. <laughs> yeah, I was just like I like I said I was conf- I wasn't I wasn't like yeah our game's gonna fucking everybody's gonna love it. Um, mm-hmm. But I was confident that um, the people that understand the point the point in in development that we're in those people are gonna I think a appreciate it um and 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 want to help us which is the big one and if we can get those people behind it and helping us in terms of giving us those feedbacks and the bugs and sending us those emails and and contacting us on twitter and all that and all that stuff that goes Mm -hmm. with it i think we'll be in a good spot and that's that's been happening tenfold to the point where we need to hire somebody to do this full time or or one of us check it out this, this oh, go ahead go yeah ahead. now now check out the segue because we're talking about the quality of the game where the game's at it is no nowhere near where we want to head like where the finished final product is right this is right. just the beginning 100 percent. and so hotshot asks how do you decide when a game like astroneer is done it could go on forever with expansion but i guess at some point you have to make another game and carry on making money to feed the family ah uh, man to talk about the end of the game man that's that's such a long way off it's hard to say like when we actually like call it quits right like yeah i think uh, i think i think uh so i this is this is a i can't really i mean i'm just speaking personally on this thing and don't don't take this to heart in terms of the, this being the absolute answer because this is sort of a team thing but i think astroneer is done in terms of in terms of being out of early access i think astroneer is one of those games that will always be improved upon mm-hmm. Whether we do workshop stuff, mods, whatever, um, I think when it's at that point where we're no longer adding features, and like we're no longer we're no we're no longer adding brand new UX uh, user experiences, uh, and and brand new feature paradigms, I think that's when the game's kind of at that point where it's done, and now all we're doing at that point is sort of embellishing and polishing. Um, now. That sounds like when you're in alpha, like when you're feature complete, but that's not really what I mean. I sort, I sort of mean like when the space fantasy that we wanted to build is fulfilled, and and that and all those ideas we have under the sun, which is, you know, go look at a roadmap for that. When all those sort of like in-game fantasies and, and the fantasies that we have as the developers are fulfilled, I think that's when the game is done. That's when we start talking about okay, let's call it 1.0. Let's move it over the threshold of early access. Let's get it out into a 1.0 thing. Let's start going after things like uh, workshops and things like that, um, or workshop support. Um, I think that's when we're going to move over to 1.0. I don't know where that is in a, in a in a linear timeline. Yeah, it's hard to say. I know that we want to get there sooner than than later, but we also aren't going to rush it because we want to we want to make sure like this is the best version of it that it can be. Um, yeah, so I think that's hopefully that's a good answer. It's kind of a hard one to answer because we don't we don't know the future. Yeah, and so. Yeah, just to add one more thing to that is yeah, it's like even after we hit one point it's not the end. No, it's not right? done. Like that's, We're not that's what you... like in, in one of the videos that we did uh, with uh, these guys over at um, Indie Obscura. You know, Brendan said something in that video um, that I love, and I kind of I kind of wish I was thinking that way before I heard him say it, which was he kind of wants Astroneer to be the last game. Sorry, he said he wants System Era to be the last job he ever has. And that's something I, th- I feel. Um, and I think Astroneer is, is the right way to go about that. Um, and we're not trying to be this, we're not trying to ship it, like work on it, put our stamp on it, ship it, wipe our hands of it, and move on. It's going to be something that at least as long as we can, System Era will support um, and, uh, and continue to, to, to develop. Yep. Uh, uh, keep going. Speaking of ending, again, I'm just perfect with these segues. The Great Worm asked, will Astroneer ever have an end game point like Minecraft, where there is, or is it like Minecraft where there's no real story? Well, there technically is a story in Minecraft, right? Or not story, but um, an end yeah. where they literally go to the end, but that was like just shoehorned in there or whatever. Yeah. Um, there are, yeah, yeah. So to answer, I think there will be a story. I don't think there's uh, going to no, hang on a second. There's not going to be like, no, no, I don't there, think, there's well, not going to be like cutscenes. And... Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think they're going to be like, there's going to be a story arc that a player could go through. And Jacob's got very interesting ideas for that. Um, yep. Which you guys may have seen in, in some older videos of ours. Yep. So um, there, there's stuff in the works. Let's just say that. I don't want to yeah. 
let's not even get into it because it's fun to just discover it. Yeah. Um, it's not there yet, obviously, but. Um... Or is it? <laughs> yeah. That's another thing they're thinking that maybe we've already started it. Yeah. Um, at least the very, uh, at least the very lowest level lying, uh, rudimentary version of it is is maybe already in the game. Yeah. So I mean, we're we definitely have a story to tell, but it's going to be a non traditional way of telling something, right? Like, yeah. I guess I guess that's probably every answer to every question that like that we have is like, yeah, we're going to do it, but it's going to be a very non traditional way. Like, Astroneer is a very non traditional way of building a game and like interacting with things and the art style and all like everything that we do is non-traditional mm -hmm. so there you go we'll do it but it'll be different um man uh lemony s ragdoll effects that you are <laughs> speaking my language i literally before we dropped on twitch today riley riley was uh getting super excited about ragdolls in the game as a, as a, as a potential feature sometime in the future. That is, yeah, that is like ragdoll plus physics damage couple, like equals like the coolest thing ever, right? Like we have all these physics objects and if you can like get hit by a rock and like it sends you ragdolling, not just like you get hit and hurt by it, right? Um, I will be banging that drum until it comes out. So <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, just, just everyone just tweet at Jacob Ragdoll. Okay. At Sparse Jacobin. Sparse Sparse Jacobian. Just, Sparse Jacobian. Is that what it is? Yeah. Sparse. Yeah. Just tweet Jacob Ragdoll. Don't say anything else. Just Ragdoll. And and I'm sure that will do it. <laughs> when he when he said when his reply is just a bunch of question marks, make sure you let him know that Riley <laughs> that, that's that's R I L E Y uh, asked you guys to do that. <laughs> Yeah, but just make sure you don't follow him. Just follow me. So, uh, anybody have any questions about the development stuff? Like I said, I'm pushing polys here. I hope this is this is exciting. I'm not sure if this is actually. I know I know people want to see the game and they want to get into the editor and stuff like that. I'm just I'm trying to get through it as quick as possible. Is there any any development stuff? Any modeling questions? Uh, 3D modeling questions. Uh, I'm trying to think of some because this is this is somewhat new to me. Um, okay, so this this is one that I saw earlier, but I, I think I could probably answer it for you. But what, what's why why 3D Max versus Maya? I mean, is it basically just that's what you learned? Yeah, it's, per, it's personal. I mean, personal preference. Uh, I don't subscribe to this notion that any one 3D application is better than the other. Um, it's just personal preference. This is what I this is what I taught myself uh, with. This is what I've used professionally. This is what my art partner and business partner Paul uh, uses. So it was just kind of a it wasn't even a de decision we had to make. It just sort of was what it was, and we have not looked back. Uh, how are our V three N three? How are you doing your animation? You want to answer that? Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, if it's uh, somewhat simple and mechanical, that would be Mr. Paul Papera, our module artist and uh, co-founder. Uh, if it's like the player animations and all that fun stuff, uh, we work with a animator friend of ours um, that uh, that uh, does a kick-ass job and. Uh, he's not an employee at System Era, so he's just a friend that that uh, helps us out when we need animations, and uh, does an amazing job. Uh, the Frigman asks: the current art style in the game is currently. Wait, the current art style. So he's asking: is it placeholder or do you? That is low poly art style by Ad this man Adam himself and Paul. So that that's not placeholder. That is an intentional design style. Yeah, it's not it's not placeholder at all. Uh, I mean, uh, I should go back on that. There is definitely placeholder art in the game. <laughs> in fact, Paul is working very hard on updating a lot of that stuff because a lot of the things that you guys are using right now is placeholder. But the overall like art style is no, it's not placeholder. The things I'm working on right now, like on the screen right now, is not placeholder. This is this is game content. 
that'll be in the game and interactive and playable. God, I hope I hope that question wasn't asked because he's like, Ugh, what is no, it? no, he. Sorry, I should have caveated it. He's like, I love the look, or oh. I like the look. No, yeah, yeah. He's like, I love the current look. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a really. Um... <laughs> okay, thank you for everyone tweeting ragged all the chicks. Are they actually doing it? Oh my god. Yeah, Jacob just tweeted at you and me. <laughs> Definitely no fault. Um, with that, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab some more water. Why is that doing that? Get out of here, you dang bookmarks. Nobody likes you. Oh, well. Let me see. I got to see uh, people yelling at... Uh, uh, what is it? Twitter.com. Sparse Jacobian. Oh. Oh, well. Whatever. I'll trust that you guys are harassing him. Good job, everybody. I'm sure he's loving us right now. When will the up okay? Let's talk about updates now that Riley's gone. Uh, when will the update for Xbox One come out? Also loving the game. Uh, that is asked by Joshua the Gamer ninety nine, sir. The update is in the queue. Uh, we should be you should be able to get your hands on it uh, early next week. Uh, that's also Windows ten people and Steam. So we have an uh, an update that's been pushed out. It's in the queue, and we are waiting it for to run through on the console side. Uh, just as a test, we just want to see how it goes. Uh, and then everybody on Steam, Windows 10, Store, uh, and um, uh, Xbox One will get their hands on it. That is update 117. I did the math, which is to say I counted on my hands and toes. There are 22 items of fixes coming to Xbox. Uh, and those are just fixes that were missed from a, from the Steam update. And uh, there are five items. Uh, excuse me, there's 27 items coming to coming to uh, Xbox and uh, there are uh, five items coming to Steam so both consoles are getting an update everybody should be on parity at 117 and uh, we will be going after that uh, at a good pace I need to blow my nose just one second oh no turn my monitor off I can't see I'm going to quickly mute, once my monitor comes back on here, I'm going to quickly mute my mic just so I can blow my nose again. I don't want to, I don't want to do that on. Man. Ugh. Oh, oh, I can't, okay. Yeah, good. I was like, oh, gross. <laughs> what a privilege. Nice. Riley got to hear that. Good for him. Man. Um, <laughs> a great thing to talk about, maybe, while you're doing this, is a little history lesson. Now. I'm like, where? how did you get, get into 3D modeling in the first place? What was the first thing you 3D modeled, and why? Uh, a fire hydrant. And... I wanted a job at Ubisoft. This is before I was ever in the industry. And I had a person on the phone telling me the buttons to press so I can model a fire hydrant, even though I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I submitted it. To, this person you worked at Ubisoft. I submitted it to Ubisoft. I did not get a callback, which is super surprising because that model was amazing. Uh, in parentheses, no, it was not. It was total shit. Um, and that's the first thing I ever modeled. I think the first thing I ever modeled that I was like happy and proud with was like a U.S. mailbox. This was, I think, it might have been twenty years old, so about thirteen years ago. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's how I got into it. I taught myself. I dropped out of college. Taught myself. Not very exciting. Nice. I no, that's one that's of the, exciting. One of the earlier things I modeled was a dump truck. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not 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 an exciting comeuppance, but uh, 
one 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 come up nonetheless. Well, okay. So, how did you go from modeling uh, fire hydrants to your first job? Uh, I'm curious where to Ubisoft. Well, Ubisoft was like a third company I ended up at uh, mm -hmm. before System Era. Um, every job I've gotten in the industry, I got because I knew somebody that worked at the studio. Man, that's like every, like everyone in the game development has that same. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's also a lot of people that just kind of come out of school and they, they do the grind and they get the job and those people get all of my respects. Um, but for me, uh, I had the, so the same person that was teaching me and I actually just spoke to this person, I think yesterday, the day before, it was really nice to hear from them. Uh, Ross, if you're listening, I owe you a lot. Um, um, Yeah, so the person that was coaching me, um, I was I was decent at doing textures and stuff like that. And he was leaving a company that he was working at called Three Wave Software. And he was like, I would like to recommend you to take over my job. Uh, he did that. Um, I flew out for an interview at the set in Vancouver. Uh, I got the job as a texture artist. And I was kind of doing some modeling at the time. I was still kind of learning. I was very green. And uh, I worked there as a texture artist and we were doing some stuff for valve at the time using the source engine um uh when uh, just after half-life 2 just came out so it was still pretty pretty fresh yeah nice uh, yeah so you train you went to was it, wait, is it 3D? No, 3D Realm? No. What's the one that makes the... It went from three, uh, three Wave Software to Relic Entertainment. Relic, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Relic. Uh, I worked on Dawn of War 2 uh, and Space Marine while I was there. I worked on Dawn of War 2 Chaos Rising, one of the expansion packs. Um, and... Um, yeah, so I got to be involved in that, which was amazing. Um, and Relic is a... I don't know if they still are. I haven't uh, certainly haven't worked there for a very long time. Uh, but that was an amazing when I was there. That was an amazing studio, and uh, I still have some of my best friends. Uh, I consider best friends um, because of that that place uh, and that company. Um, and then I, yeah, actually, a person that I worked with at Three Wave ended up getting a job at Ubisoft Toronto, and uh, he recommended me for a position that they were hiring there, and I ended up getting the job at. Ubisoft because of that as well because it's somebody that I knew. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting how that works, and I think it's, uh, I mean, it's it's nice because you just you know you can trust them and you know they they work well. So it's all, half the jobs in the industry just are people like oh yeah this guy's awesome or like just uh, uh, someone that you used to work with goes somewhere else and they like say, come along with me or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, come with me if you want. To I, think, I think. You know, I I know I'm, I'm barely certain that's how Brennan and Jacob both ended up at three four three as mm -hmm. well, um, and I've gotten a few jobs from that that method as well. Uh, but yeah, the whole I mean the game industry is such a small little space that yeah. like that kind of just knowing someone and like doing good work is like the most valuable thing yeah. you can do. Hundred percent. Man, I am so happy I, I switched my mind from destroying this whole thing to just destroying this one part because this is talking and bottling. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, a little flashback to to three hours ago. Adam was like, I'm just gonna destroy the whole thing and yeah. it's gonna be very easy. Yeah. I should yeah, I just I was so cocky then. Yeah, that's like again. That, that's like every. That's like the epitome, like the epitome of game development, right? Like, oh, this will only take a couple hours. Yeah, nope. and then it turns out I know absolutely nothing. Um, more questions. Uh, uh, 
Uh, well, we had, we, had, we had some things that we wanted to talk about. Why don't you load up Slack really quick? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me look at those. Um, well, I think we talked about most of them. Let's um, talk about it again. Actually, while you're doing that, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Yeah, uh, let's keep in there. It's been about three hours here. Um, yeah, so if anybody's watching and they haven't heard, uh, my name is Adam. I am one of the co-founders of System Era. And you are watching me do some 3D modeling for some assets for our game called Astroneer which is uh, available on Steam, Windows 10 Store, and uh, Xbox One Game Preview. Uh, we're also in Early Access on Steam. Game is $19.99 USD, uh, give or take some dollars and monies, depending on where you live in the world, but it's about 20 bucks American. Um, uh, up in here in Canada, it's $25. That hurts a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, you are also listening to one of my partners in crime, uh, Riley Gravatt. Uh, that is me. Hello. He is our uh, audio designer, uh, music organizer, facilitator, ear specialist. Uh, we are two content creators for the game, and you are watching us create some content and talk about content creation for our Astroneer. Uh, and we are a team of six, so there's four other individuals that are working on Astroneer full-time. And there's the engineers and our game designer and other artists, and everybody's working on different things, so we are working on content. They are working on optimizations. Uh, our game is still in pre-alpha, so it's a little buggy. It's a little crashy. Uh, I'm sure it's given some people a headache or some blue balls when they they lost a shuttle that they worked so hard towards or a rover. Uh, we will get those things fixed as we go along. Uh, but we wanted to do a dev-focused stream so I could just sit here and create content. We can answer some questions since the game's been out. It's been about three weeks. Actually, three weeks today, Riley. Uh, congratulations, dude, by the way. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, three weeks today. 21 days. Um and yeah so we just wanted to do that so uh you can again the game's called astroneer if you think of like astronaut and pioneer or astronaut and engineer uh we just smash those two words together um you can find us on steam uh maybe if webarius wants to drop a link to the the steam page or the windows 10 page on chat that would be amazing um and webarius is one of our mods uh props to him um and uh yeah so you're just watching us we've been streaming now for a couple of hours oh uh Coming up almost three hours. hours. Yeah, almost three hours. Not bad. Um, and uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you are supporting us by having purchased the game, thank you so much. Uh, if you are, if you have supported us even further by taking the time to write a review, good or bad, negative or positive, thank you again. Uh, I do my best to reply to the negative ones so that I can see if I can't help you uh, with issues that you are having with the game. Uh, maybe you haven't seen our roadmap. Maybe the game just didn't run for some stupid bug or something like that that we could solve. Um, uh, if you're commenting on our forum, if you're commenting on the Steam forum, if you're tweeting at us, all of that stuff is going to make the game better. Uh, we do our best to read it all. I know we don't reply to a lot of it. Uh, I do. We do our best to reach out to the ones that we can. Uh, and uh, all of that stuff is going to make Astroneer better. So we are super, super um, appreciative of that. Uh, and your support and even if you haven't even bought the game because you know early access isn't for you a game that's broken is not for you uh that is totally fine as well uh we understand that we just hope that you follow along and that when you feel the time is right for you to jump in and support us uh should you ever feel that way uh you do that and um uh, we will love you for it and uh, the game will be a lot better for that as well so thank you for that and right now i am uh, modeling a giant uh we're working on this guy right here Wow, that's 227,000 triangles that I'm looking at. So I've got a bit of optimizing to do. The good news is we'll never see these guys all together like this. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a, a, a space station that I just made up based on some references and some, some stuff that I like. and um, um, Or a probe or something like that. It's just something that's flying through space that I'm now breaking up so that you can come across its wreckage in the game and... Uh, and as you as the game grows, uh, there will be additional gameplay that comes from that. And the current part that we are working on is this guy right here. And I just sort of started to break up all the panels, so it looks a little bit destroyed. Uh, and I'm about to take a huge chunk off. I've got the door here, uh, which maybe I'll do something like oops, something like this with, so that you can kind of get inside, and there'll be some stuff in there that you can play with. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Cool. And yeah, I'll just to answer some like frequently asked questions that we have constantly going. Um, that uh, a lot of people are new. Um, so yeah, uh, we're constantly working on stability. Obviously, we is not Adam and I. 
that's the three programmers. They're working actively right now on that stuff and new content for the game, uh, or new features for the game, feature instability, right? And so, yeah, we, we are aware there's some F FPS and performance issues and whatnot happening and weird bugginess on multiplayer and safe games. And those were all, all those improvements will come over time. And like every update we do, we'll, we'll chip away at that. And yeah. uh, soon we'll have a very stable thing. Um, and for some people, it, it can be stable. So it's, it's, it's again. That's that's PC development. That's uh, that is, that's that's just early access, right? Like that's kind of the things that we we are actively always trying to fix. And uh, yeah, we are we are cranking away at that. Uh, add to that dedicated servers. Yeah, uh, that's has always been kind of like this cool cool thing that we would love to to have and uh that that we need to improve for performance and among other things before we can really move forward with that mm -hmm. so that that's another one uh and it, it's all trickle down right like that by doing stuff now and like will basically get us on on the road to other other things so there's 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 definitely things working in progress right mm -hmm. um Man, and I feel bad answering this one after I said like an hour ago that I was going to answer it after you, you were talking and I, I forgot to answer it. But Linux and Mac, those are things we want to support. Um, it's, a, it's, I think, mostly a, uh, obviously a, a question of uh, not an if as much as when. Like we, it's a, again, just trying to find the right priorities of getting support for those. But I mean, Unreal, the, uh, we're using Unreal in Gen 4. And Unreal Engine 4 supports Linux and Mac. Yeah. So, um, yeah, same thing with, like, we want, I mean, right now we're only focused on making the game the best possible experience uh, for PC and uh, Xbox One. But for all platforms, whether it's more PC or, yeah, whether it's more PC platforms or other consoles, we want to have the game on as many things as possible because we want people to play it and enjoy mm -hmm. it. And it that is again. That's a thing that comes in time. It's not. We're we're just focused on right now making it the best for for Windows and uh, Xbox One. That's right. So. Uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of the answer there. Um, next updates that are going to come out for Xbox and Windows. Uh, I think very soon. Uh, we don't have the exact date on it, but actually, I ju yeah, I, ju are... I just I just touched on that actually rather really while you. Uh... Well, that was way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So they're coming, uh, like Adam said, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we'll we'll go from there. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Why did we move from Unity to Unreal Four? Huh. Uh, uh, PC Zach, that's interesting. Well, when we started, so uh, just a little bit of history. Uh, so Zach, PC Zach, you have been watching us for a while. If you know that, that's that's awesome, dude. Um, so originally, um, uh, Astroneer was built using the Unity engine. It was a bit of a different kind of... It felt different as a game. A lot of the same premises were there. Um, and we switched from Unity. Uh, at the time when we started Unity, uh, Unreal 4 did not exist. We didn't know it wasn't there. It wasn't even really a choice for us. Um, and Unity was brand new for everybody. It was brand new for the programmers. It was brand new for us. We had never used it in our pro professional careers. So it was there. It was in, relatively inexpensive. I think we spent like fifteen hundred dollars on like four uh, per license, and we bought like four licenses for it. So it was relatively cheap from a from a from a business side to get up and running. Uh, so we dove in. And we built this game, and that's what we sort of showed our friends with, and showed um, you know back when we were looking for publishing. It was you know we're showing people that kind of stuff, and it was good. Um, and then I think we went to that GDC where I was telling that story about Factorio earlier. And, um, wow, I just realized I, no music again. This must be, there we go. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. What? Uh, oh yeah, Unity. Uh, so totally, yeah, wow, yeah. total brain fart there. Holy dude, I didn't even know what the hell we were talking about. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Unity. So yeah, so we, we had chopped it around. Then, then uh, I think at that GDC that we were at, Epic announced Unreal 4. And it was like, it was free. Uh, you know, you're going to split 5% five, 5 revenue from anything that made over $50,000, all this kind of stuff. 
and all of a sudden from from paul and i who have uh, practical professional experience in unreal from the games that we worked on uh you know this giant light bulb went off that um you know from a from a team proficiency side we felt that we could do a lot more in the same amount of time if we went to unreal um and so we tried it and because of the unreal blueprint system which is kind of like a vision or a uh, visual representation of scripting it's not coding it's kind of more scripting it's very visual uh that means that we could alleviate some uh pressure from the programmers uh to write stuff for us that we could we could work on the game uh by using blueprint because unity is the definition of uh, excuse me, Unreal is a definition of out of the box. There's a lot of stuff in there that we could just get started. We could hit the ground running. Whereas with Unity, a lot of the things that we used, uh, Jacob especially, had to spend time writing the tools for just to get going. Uh, and that's just the way the Unity, uh, uh, back then anyway, the, the, the ecosystem worked on Unity. Uh, whereas with Unreal, when we decided to make the switch over, we were moving rapidly, like very, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, and and we haven't looked back since then. Uh, yeah, and and that's and again just to reaffirm, there's not really like one better, right? They they both are really great tools that can do a lot, but this, each one has their own strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And uh, we just found a home with Unreal. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I I, I, I love working. For the most part, um, there's a lot of powerful things you can do, in in the blueprints, and yeah, it's it's very fast. It's it's very good for most of what the game is, right? It's not perfect, but it's a great, it's been great to build the game in. Yeah. And yeah. And I think the other thing is that it's also, um, obviously there's a license fee for it, but it's it's an open open engine, right? And I don't think Unity is, and that, that was kind of a big deal for the programmers. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak too much for them, but I think I think that's one of the bigger bigger reasons. Um, uh, what else do we want to talk about? have questions about? Uh, oh, yeah, so, um, man, I'm, I'm kind of losing a blank of what I had. Oh, well. But yeah, Unity is cool. I've used it other times, and it's doesn't I really have the best audio interface though. Hmm. Oh, though Unreal isn't. Yeah, Unreal is not perfect either. But actually, neither of them are that great. So actually, talking about that, so I'll I'll probably make the switch to uh, integrating Unreal with uh, Wise re mm -hmm. relatively soon. What's, so, what's I'm, Wise? I'm looking for that. Uh, Wise is a uh, sound middleware so it's basically the sound engine yeah of the game well it is the sound engine of the game so instead of using the out of the box unreal we're we're going to use wise which is a way more robust thing it's uh, something I've, i had experience uh working in with at disney and really when i was at sony um, and ea both of our proprietary tools were mimicked off of kind of what basically what uh, wise was doing so wise is great cool uh, there's a couple questions. Do a lot of cool things. Uh, have yeah. you ever gotten to the center of a planet? Yes. Uh, any hints of when we'll be getting a teaser for the creation update? Uh, uh, what's a hint? Um, uh, soon. Mm. Sorry. That's, yeah, a, that's, soon. that's a lame answer, but that's the best I can give you. Uh, will you stream tomorrow? No. Uh, will you guys <laughs> be at PAX East 2017? Uh, to be determined. Uh. We are going to be at GDC... But uh, we're not demoing or anything. We're just there to support our industry. Hang out, yep. And, and, and support Zabir. Zabir's doing a talk. Yes, yeah, Zabir. Everyone go buy the GDC pack and watch Zabir. Um, I've got a question about how lighting works. How, how does the global illumination work? Um, holy shit, that's a good question for Jacob. You should ask him about global illumination and how it works in Unreal. Uh, uh, little, little segue, though. The lighting in the game looks amazing, and Jacob did an amazing job. Jacob used to be the lighting engineer at 343. 
Yes. Wedding's important. Yes. Uh, Adam, how difficult was it to start your own company? Uh, it was easy to start it. It's uh, very difficult to <laughs> keep going. Uh, we used uh, LegalZoom. That's how easy it was uh, to sign up for the LLC. Uh, but, you know, hiring people and becoming friends with them and making the right decisions and, you know, everything you do is a gamble. That is fucking hard. Very hard. But starting the starting it was easy. Uh, will, the <laughs> will the next update improve performance? Yes. Will it improve your performance? I don't know what your problems are, but maybe because uh, we're not. Uh, this next update does not solve everything under the sun, but it will definitely be a uh, improvement. Uh, quickly trying to fire through a couple more here. Will we be able to repair some stuff on the planet, rover, satellites, etc.? Maybe. That's a good one for Jacob to to answer. Uh, repair is a is a verb uh, that we've used before. Uh, whether or not it ends up in Astroneer, I have no idea. Uh, please import the creation in the game. Uh, don't know what you are asking, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, why in the NVIDIA control panel, if I select this game <laughs> to manage its 3D settings, does it call it Asteroid Assembler? If you ever find out the answer to that question, can you let me know? Because I have no idea. I've asked the programmers. They have no idea. When I, when I take a... Uh, uh, when I take a um, shadow play video of Astroneer, it calls it Asteroid Assembler. I have no idea why the hell it does that. If you find it out, please tweet me. <laughs> uh, will the next update fix leggy save bugs? Uh, uh, I think so. I think a lot of that kind of stuff, especially the save game stuff, is going in. Sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, need space paint, okay. Ability to change spacesuit colors, uh, probably... Uh, it would be cool to have a really deep cave system biome that could close to the core, like magma hazard. Sir, I agree, or ma'am, or uh, individual, uh, I agree with that. Uh, I want subterranean biomes. Um, and that was, I think, six or seven questions in a row. Uh, oh, when will the zebra god make a coming in the game? Uh, that's asked by Shadow Xeno X. Uh, uh, Z zebra god? Question mark? Uh, will there What's be up? any mysterious encounters in the game? There already are. You just haven't found them yet, MBoogie117. There are already mysterious encounters in the game. You need to... If I could challenge you, you need to explore more, my friend. And there'll be more mysterious yes, yes, and there more will be, encounters there will as time goes on. There will definitely be more. Can we see what Riley looks like? Why would you want to do that to yourself? <laughs> He's far too beautiful for anyone... Uh, web camera or pixels on your screen to pick up. Uh, what is the end of the game for this game? Uh, it turns out uh, you're all cats in the end. That's the surprise. I just spoiled it for you. Uh, what is the zebra ball? That's a good question. If you, Zoth, if you ever find out, let me know. Uh, the ball, zebra ball. Uh, okay, good. Max multiplayer increase above four players? Yes. I hope so. God, I hope so. Uh, these people are just saying the zebra, zebra ball. Zebra ball. Interiors uh. when? Oh, geez. Uh, somebody just said I look like Bob Ross. That's... Yeah. Yeah. I do. Look at me. Okay. Look, at, look at this. This is Bob Ross. Right here. This is Bob Ross right here. Making little happy happy solar panels. Yeah, little, little happy solar panels. Little happy solar panels. Uh... Everybody, everybody, you know what? Without, without darkness, you can't have any lightness. That was a fun little rapid fire. I got to get back to modeling though. So uh, Riley, you, you keep your tabs up. All right, I'll, I'll, man, you're firing away though, man. I'll, I'll model for you if you just keep answering those questions quickly. Uh, uh, Vex Fusion SES Dev, will programmers ever do a live stream session? Uh, maybe. Uh, turns out coding on live stream might be boring though. So. Uh, well, I, I mean, Jacob. I mean, Jacob. Jacob. Will, yeah, I mean, well, Jacob's a programmer designer though, right? Like, I don't. Are they asking with the engineers? Uh, well, do said live programmers. Stream? Yeah, I guess they'd be maybe, maybe more engineer stuff. Because Jacob has done a live stream, and he'll, uh, fingers crossed, do more, because I think he does a, yeah, does a yeah, great job. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, more will Zabir do one, or Brendan? I don't know. Tweet them. Get at them. Say, where the hell is your Twitch stream? Uh, and use those words specifically. Let's get angry. Let's get them on here. Uh, ooh, uh, musty face cloth. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What's that person's what? name? Musty face cloth. I don't know who you are, but I love you. Go ahead. Uh, audio slider fixing coming. 
at some point, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, by the way, uh, audio any, slider. What's that? I think I think only the music slider is actually functional. <laughs> Those were just kind of put in without actually connecting the wires to it. But yeah, that's a that. Yeah, yeah, we would like to get that fixed. <laughs> I think we should just keep uh, it broken forever. It could be oh, one of man. the first things that people can fix on the Steam Workshop is a volume slider. Uh, this is for me, Cool Bob Sauce. Uh, question to the sound guy. That's me. I have never actually gotten the hand of making quality sound effects. Can you elaborate the process? Oh man, that's gonna take like five hours to talk about. But uh, yeah, you basically record quality stuff with a quality mic and quality preamp. But really, you just need a really good room that can kind of be silent, and you record it, and you just kind of perform sound the way uh, it needs to be. So, for example, a lot of the a lot of the little moving parts in the game are just little micro sounds that I recorded of like umbrellas moving or just things moving across other things or whatnot. Um, just tons of different little things. And yeah, so you record that and make it sound good and you perform it well to match the picture. And then, yeah, you edit it together and combine it, mix it, master it, uh, maybe get a synth or two and make some sounds out of that. And that's it super easy uh just do it for 15 years and you're you're solid yeah uh, uh, speaking of which we have discussed riley doing a stream uh of fully capture right yeah yeah at some point i'll do it i need to figure out the logistics of it because i'm using um, a ddda converter that it would be nice for people to actually hear what i'm doing and I need to work on figure out how the best signal flow is, and well, actually, I need something to cool too. So um, maybe there'll, there'll, there'll be some content coming soon that will be fun to do fully for. Uh, yeah, so look for that at some point. Though, man, we are really good at making live streaming or let's play promises, and they never come to fruition. Because I think, I think a while back, like eight months ago, we were like, yeah, we'll totally live stream. Every, once a month, once a week, and I think I said so, the same thing about let's play videos. But look how that turned out. Here we are, <laughs> <laughs> number number five. Yeah, maybe when we have more people to like make the game, we can we can get our YouTube subs up. But for now, oh my God, do we have way bigger fish to fry? Oh yeah. Uh, ooh, uh, Mr. Seth, uh, when, when will truck tires go over rock? Oh, I thought that was an audio question. <laughs> yeah, truck tires are, like, broken uh, from the audio side of things. They, like, really wonky. Uh, yeah. They're, I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. That's not us, for us to discuss. That's a, uh, but yeah, that's aware. It's definitely aware. Uh, man, I've lost my place. Uh, what about a tool for keeping heading in vehicles? Um, Possibly, uh, oh, I think a like, lot of these questions are going to be like answered in movies because, I mean, for one, um, that's not the best questions for Adam and I to talk about. And then number two is, um, even if Jake was here, it, it it's hard to say, right? Like you don't know until you put it into the game and see if it works. And um, it's like a lot of trial and error and figuring things out. So mm -hmm. maybe. Um, I think we should. I think we should just of... commit to a bunch of things that other people are going to have to work on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All those guys, all those features you guys are asking for is yes, because I don't have to make them. But no, there it's, will it's, be it's, it's a maybe. first person, third person, hybrid game, like shooter, guaranteed. Yeah, we're definitely putting guns in the game. Guns are the top priority over bug fixing and fun. We're just gonna put in. So. And that's a joke. God, I, I hope people don't think. Oh, Adam just confirmed guns because I hope Astroneer never has weapons. Um. When, will, will the gravity change when you leave the planet by foot? Gravity doesn't change when you leave the planet. We tried to reach the moon. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite work like that. I don't know if like you maybe you'll be able to like build a. I, yeah, I think I think that's something that we've talked about way in the past where it'd be cool to be like, oh, I build a little space elevator, um, instead of launching things. But I, I again, maybe. Uh, right now, gravity does change though, based on the planet's size and how how far you are into the planet. So, like, if you go to the core, you'll actually experience weightlessness, and that is a realistic depiction, right? Mm -hmm. um, you actually don't get heavier; you get 
lighter as the closer to the core of the planet you get. Um, space whales. Um, well, there are bones that look like whale bones, so I don't know. Uh, more weather effects on different planets, please. Uh, yeah, I think that's something that Adam was like loving. Yes, please. Let's do more. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's definitely. Yep. Um. Yeah. Oh, uh, M. Diggins. Oh, yeah. Uh, send to contact at Systemera for any bugs that AMD relive. That's interesting. We would love to know more inform as much information as about it. What's up? Uh, we need monster trucks for those pesky rocks. Hmm. Okay. Space Maybe? monster trucks. Uh, that's on the that's on the top priority. How? Oh, sound guy. How long have you been in the? the field of interest uh a decade of like professional i think no not quite a decade uh nine years but i worked originally in uh a post-production house for commercials then that was in chicago and then i went to la worked in the film industry for a bit then i went to sony and worked there that was my first foray into video games then i went back to video or film for a bit then full-time or back back to video games at electronic arts then to disney and then here so for a while uh not not a ton though compared to other people though uh how many people do you have in your company the sections well not really sections because we all wear a lot of hats but there are three programmers one programmer is a designer programmer though okay play program. there's adam yeah, well, yeah. Game yeah. designer, gameplay programmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of both. Uh, there's Adam, who you are watching right now, model. And there's Paul, are the two artists. And I am the sound guy. Uh, so, uh, who's working as a sound actor of Astroneer Man? Well, it's Astroneer Person. And I won't say, because that ruins it. It is supposed to be something that you can implant yourself on. Uh, is the first aircraft going to be a vital or a, or like a plane? I don't know how to answer that uh, or what that question is. Uh, uh, this is interesting. I don't know how much we want, but. Uh, do you guys have a studio space, and would you ever consider hiring interns? Um, not at the moment would be my answer. I don't know how you. Do you want to talk about it, Adam? Uh, all, like, that's that's uh, if we're gonna get if we're gonna uh, look at interns, that's a ways ways out. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, we have a we have a office though for sure. I'm just not you and I don't work in it, but uh, the the fellows in Seattle. Yeah. Are uh, in an office. For mm -hmm. sure. I, yeah, I mean the problem with a small team is you everyone to be like rock stars basically mm -hmm. or else yeah so the, the interns are awesome to have but usually is more of a bigger studio thing yeah um well cars have horns oh well that is a good idea that i was actually thinking the other day it'd be cute to have horns um i don't know if when that will be or whatever or maybe it's a, that's probably a maybe but it would be a nice little thing to get your friend's attention mm -hmm. um Oh, okay. Sco Fillmore. Um, also, I don't want to ruin everything you're working on, but shouldn't the solar panels be breaking like glass and not having square sections missing? Well, okay. Do you know about this? Because I'm curious too. Like, are, they're not really made of glass, though, are they? They're more of a. a I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, he. Uh, the person that asked that question is probably right, but when we work in this sort of art style, I kind of need to allude that it's broken. Um, rather than spend the time actually going over the, the the intricate details of it, so I'm just sort of taking a stylistic approach to it, looking frayed and kind of smashed and broken. Um, and I'm doing it based on the original chops I did to show off the solar panel, which is just cubes. So the person's probably right. Uh, it's just kind of um not something I was too overly concerned of because I just need to look a like a solar panel, which it will when the materials are on. And uh, be broken, which I think just doing it in this more simpler way is uh, the right way to do it. 
Nice. Um, are uh, clouds going to move in the game? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think they will. Yeah. So, at some point, they kind of they don't they don't travel right now, but they they are animated and stuff right now. But they're they're that's I know that's not the answer the person's looking for. Um, but uh, I think so. I think I, I I would love that. I would love you know to go from a, a, a completely uh, open sky to overcast to rain to thunderstorm to uh, back to you know um, open sky. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Uh, what are some of the games that got you guys? In? Um, mine wasn't specifically video games. It was also film. But Matrix and uh, Halo, the original Halo, was where it's like I want to do that for a living. How about you, Adam? What was the question? What are some games that got you guys interested in making video games? Like, what was like the first one that was like oh, I want to make games? Uh, Counter Strike. Nice. Nice. Uh, and I made textures. Um, uh, for Counter Strike, which was fun. Um, and yeah, I wanted to get in there. I thought I could do a good job. Um, and I've just sort of. Wow, how many? Okay. Um, yeah, it was Counter Strike. I wanted to do textures. That's where I got started into it. And then uh, just kind of took it from there. Um, and then the games that keep me in there are, are games like Inside, stuff like that. Nice. Uh, the, someone's saying the damage seems quite light for something that has fallen through orbit through the atmosphere. I wonder if I, I don't know how old this question is. I don't know. Uh, that's pretty presumptuous to assume it fell. Well, that's my answer. Hmm. 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 Mystery. Uh. Oh man, there's so many questions. Uh. <laughs> uh. So, do astroneers use telekin? Are they space wizards? I've never actually considered like that being weird that you could just pick things up and they kind of hold their arms. Um. I don't know. You tell me. What was the question? Uh, do astroneers use telekinesis to move? Uh, are are we space wizards? And uh, who knows? How are they holding things in their arm? Right, like they just kind of point their fingers at something. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think that, that that's one of those things where like it's more a, um, it's more uh, well, it's tangible, so you can kind of kind of see it more quickly but one of the things we wanted was the verbiage to change when you were talking about it so when you typically what happens when you're in a third person game is you refer to your character as my character or my person or the guy did this you don't really say i did this and like you would maybe when you're playing a first person game and we sort of we go after this sort of floaty interaction um or um that diegetic interface so that the verbiage changed. So you start saying, I did this and I did that. And um, having it just sort of float around is just the sort of first implementation of that. Uh, I think that's one of the things where the UI needs to improve. Um, to, to better indicate, A, who's grabbing something, how are they grabbing it, yada, yada, yada. So uh, I think that'll be improved over time. Um. Mm, where are we at? Oh, uh, this one I can answer. Mr. Deception says, SES Dev, are the storm sounds being addressed? I can hear them in the game, but no sense of direction in relationship to the sound. Yes, that is a thing that annoys the heck out of me. And it's kind of an issue with how Unreal handles mixing. Like, it could be fixed now. I, I might look into it, but it might just be something that I address with wise and that's another thing that great is great about wise is all the mixing and panning and how things relate because that's it's a it's, what's happening right now is like the focus um which is the it's blending everything to not be um isolated in a left or right field of your of your speaker it's kind of like it's going to just be in both and have an ambiguous direction and yeah that'll that'll be fixed that definitely annoys that guy me so yeah 
Uh, did you guys experiment with VR for this game? Uh, I have an answer to that. Not really? Yeah? I have actually played Astroneer in VR. Did I ever tell you that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I played... Uh... I don't know if he's still watching, but uh, Matt Kazan, a, a really good friend of mine here, um, he's got a game called uh, No More Room in Hell on uh, Steam. It's a very successful uh, zombie shooter. Um, he, he and his team were in the city, and they were doing a little game jam, so I went and joined them. And I think we were still using Unity at the time, so this was the Unity version of the game. But I had a chance to see the game in VR, and it was rad. It was cool. Nice. Uh, see our yeah. game in, uh, in uh, VR, actually. It was really cool. Holding all the secrets, Adam. Even to me. Sorry, dude. You need you need friends with uh, VR stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there a place I can send a list of known bugs? I have I found a few I haven't seen a lot, but I don't want to flood you guys. Um, emails at contact at systemera.net. No nope. good. No, uh, no, 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 not that email. That, that'll that'll get uh, lost. Oh, no, 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 not contact. Uh, uh, support. support. Yeah, support. But yeah. usually, like, support we just want for crashes or, like, things that are just straight up stopping you from being able to play. Honestly, if you've got a list of bugs, the best place is the forum. Um, now, yeah. you might you might make a post, and it's going to get, like, eight views uh, and no comments, which is bound to happen. Um, but one of those views will likely be one of us on the team because we do a pretty good job of reading them all. We just can't respond to them all. And typically, we only respond when we need additional information to better understand the issue. Um, which is kind of shitty because you spend all this time writing it, you kind of want the um, the affirmation that uh, the person on the developer team has seen it. Uh, but just from the sake of time, we can't, just can't do that. So usually we reach out um, uh, if we need more information. So I think the forum is probably the best the best spot right now. Uh, the mm -hmm. System Era forum. Uh, Yvaris, if you could drop a link to our forum on there, uh, especially the bugs and crashes forum, I would really appreciate that, dude. Uh, will space stations be in orbit or something that we can fly at some point? Uh, that's a big maybe. That'd be cool, though. Like a, zero, zero G gravity kind of like orbiting and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's, like that's, a a big, that's a big fat maybe. I know conceptually Jacob really likes the idea of zero gravity. And I think that would be yeah. super cool. Um, so I think it's just a matter of uh, if it figuring ended, out how to make that. Figure out how to do it. How do we? How do we make it fun? Oh wow, this thing got destroyed. Um, uh, I just had a little Oprah Winfrey moment there. That was kind of nice. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think a lot of these are just like we need to figure out if there's like a gameplay role into it. Yeah. Um, and by we, Jacob. Um, and yeah, it's just it's a matter of like, does it work? And if it does, it's like yeah, cool. Does it work? Does it serve? Uh, does it serve a certain purpose? Is it like a you know why 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 would it be? Why is it in there? What what does the space station? Ugh, why does the station do? Um. Whoa whoa whoa! See, look at this. Look at my screen now. What is this coming on? Come on now. Hmm. What the hell is that? Uh, what is a black and white ball you find on the ground? Can't seem to find it for it. Not sure what you're talking about. Uh, I, I'm just going to quickly, uh, I think Max is starting to uh, screw the pooch a little bit, so I'm going to switch to full cam. You guys can see my ugly mug. I'm going to save my work and relaunch 3D Studio Max. Sweet. Uh, will there ever be indoor forest planet or denser forest? Adam. What's the question? Will there ever be an indoor like forest planet, basically, or bigger oh, like heard. forests? Uh, yeah, maybe. Sure. I think, that, I think that would be cool. We kind of have big trees and areas that you can come across. Um, hopefully that person has seen that planet or that, that particular biome because I know not, not every biome is shown every time. Um, uh, yeah, I think that would be really cool to do. Uh, it just when and if, you know. Yeah. Uh, I have a good idea for... A an idea a big truck with a drill on it to make tunneling easier with angle adjustments so you can angle them well you technically you can put the the drill on the big truck rover because it has a two slot spot and yeah it kind of works it's not it's not it's not what you're thinking but again like that those are little seeds of like things that will come into fruition right like maybe you it will have a full just drillable thing well, yeah uh uh, we'll be able to sol salvage old wrecks for a 
for iron. Uh, that is a good thing and something we've definitely talked about. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, I thought. Mm, never mind. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to go into too yeah, much yeah. detail. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, like yep, stuff. Yeah, that's definitely being talked about. Will there be? Wait, did I lose my position? Uh. Yeah, damage, like basically talking about damage with weather or whatever, repair bots. Uh, maybe? I, again, maybe? Um, I heard. Riley, check out my screen. Check this out. I think this is almost ready. Uh, check, check out the Twitch, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think I'm almost done. I'm going to get this ready nice. in the game. Um, I just need something for the assets to spawn that are going to go inside because you can see if I go. Actually, I, sorry, I guess my audio is not in sync with my video. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's it's still behind. That's fine. Here's a little yeah, looks good. Here's a little astroneer, and he's gonna be able to walk into the inside. And he's gonna be like, doot, 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 doot. oh my god, there's so many things in here. And then he'll take them all out. Nice, be cool. sweet. Oh god, uh, I just feel like the, colli the collision for this is gonna it. be a nightmare. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm so nice. Uh, I have a few more that I want to address. I, automostatic. Riley, I heard a pre made sound from the internet when you complete a building, building something. What's your excuse? What does that mean? Uh, what was the question? I, I heard a pre made sound from the internet when you complete building some things. What's your excuse? Mm, there are a couple of library sounds being used, but that's not from the internet. Um, most of them are all mine, either recorded or mostly FM8, so I don't really know what you're getting at, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, what, what is your excuse, man? Psh, lazy devs. Hashtag lazy devs. I know. Uh, Naval Strike tomorrow, music idea. It changed me. Dissonant when a storm rolls in. That's a good idea. And again, that's where the switch to Wise really allows us to leverage game states and all these other things more. It takes a little bit of pro pro programmatic time away from the game, but it's, it's definitely worth it. So uh, just to talk about music real quick, uh, when we when we build the music, Rutger Zoidefeld is the composer of the game. We really, like, well, I, I had him actually basically print everything into the stem, so... We have five stems, five layers of music. So a stem is like a layer. But, um, and there's five actually tracks of music playing right now in the game. They're all kind of randomized based on a few variables, but mostly just random. Um, and it's not really that dynamic as much as I would like it. And there's also a dissonant, distorted layer actually that plays. It's not really being triggered yet, but it's there to be leveraged later on. So like. Originally, I tried to implement it for when you're low on oxygen, it starts distorting, but it didn't really sound that great. So I, I pulled it out because I didn't have time to polish it. Um, but it could be for things when you're low on health, um, like a storm rolling through might be a good time to use it. And yeah, so there's, we could also adjust how music is playing. So right now it's kind of wallpapery, um, filling the air. But yeah, later on it could de it could definitely be like okay, maybe maybe one layer one one layer of these tracks doesn't play when you're underground because it sounds too happy or. Uh, there's there's a ton of different game states what we have like maybe time of day is affected so at night a couple layers don't play on of the five layers so it's all it I, ideally it's all going to be dynamic right uh when are you going to have water functions to the game uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll try it it's that very tough when you have a very dynamic game mm -hmm. uh, where you can train so uh we'll I, there's not really a, a date <laughs> when we're going to try it or attempt it so again maybe oh man i i'm like <sighs> yeah no sound if there's no atmosphere yeah i agree uh, again that's uh, dealing with game states and mixing um and yeah it's in early access uh i'm just gonna sorry i'm gonna skip a bunch of people and get more up to date with the question uh oh there is a cool one is there an interest in binaural audio or 3d audio yeah yeah definitely Oh man, stop asking questions. 
We had a spacecraft to fly in space, like a jet on a planet. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. Yep. We already have that. It's a seat that you can sit in and fly around on. <laughs> yeah. It's a feature by yeah, design. Uh... <laughs> God, I love that bug. Uh, I get these weird objects spawned. Mo, that thing. Uh, weird objects that spawn in my habitat module. Any idea what that is? That's a bug from a thing um, that was supposed to exist somewhere else. Um, yeah, it's a funny one though. You can. Which one is it? You can actually. Yeah, I don't want to. I mean, I shouldn't spoil it. Which, which, uh, what, read the question again. Oh, that's so. I get these weird objects spawn in my habitat module. Any idea what it is and why they spawn? So ah, that's yeah. It's, yeah. Hard, it's hard to infer, but I think he's talking about uh, when you add power to something. And then yeah, I think uh, I think, I think on Reddit they called them the calculators. Yeah, so that was a little thing that we were. Yeah, I don't know. That's all. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, leave it. But yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, will there be more refined options with the terrain tool, like a finer point or wider? Ah, well, that's an interesting thing. That is, yeah, that's we're we're investigating that right now. So that might be a sooner than later thing, but no promises, right? Um, Adam, here's one. What's your art workflow? Uh, have a beer. Uh, build a Pinterest page. Have another beer. Um, uh, build more Pinterest reference images. Start to model. Um, probably get thirsty. Have another beer. Uh, oh my god! And then I have beers, and then this kind of shit happens. Oh wait, I fixed it. I fixed it. Um. Uh, yeah. No, it's just sort of like collect, collect reference, uh, mass things out into general shapes. So like, for instance, when I started. Um, unhide all when I started this guy ew, this guy uh, I just kind of started it like this where I just sort of like took a cylinder really quickly oops Jesus cylinder um, and I just sort of started massing it out to kind of get an idea for the overall shape that I would want so um you know, figure out its length. Uh, try to get a composition that looks really good. So if I wanted it, for instance, if it was this one here, um, and I wanted it to sort of have a heavier ass end, I might do something like this. Um, do it again over here. Pull this out. A oops. Pull this one out a little bit, but then like shrink this one down so it has a bit of a little taper to it. Uh, yeah, I would just start to qu quickly start massing it out, break it up into different working components, add a little bit more detail. Uh, for this one in particular, I sort of uh, built these little greebly things on the side that I could use to decorate, which you can kind of see are on it right there. Um, and then, yeah, detail, 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 get it into a spot that is uh, f looks like it could be functional and it's intact, and then save that off to the side. And then, uh, in particular, with the wreckage stuff, once it's saved and off to the side, then I uh, do the damage state. And uh, that's what I'm working on now. And then it's going to be get it into the game really quickly, get an uh, idea for size, which I'm trying to do here before we wrap the stream up. Uh, and actually, Riley, thank you so much for staying on the call this whole time. We were well over the time that we thought we were going to be. Yeah, this is going on, but that's, that's okay. Uh, actually. Um, and then uh, get it in, see how the size looks, get it, uh, any, make any changes from there. And then... Um, and then, uh, you know, get the colors on, get the materials going, go back, do collision. Uh, then I set it up as an actor. And an actor is just really like a collection of properties. So it's, you know, the static mesh, the particle effects, Riley's audio, collision, any whiz bang program stuff that we need in there. If it's like a collectible, things like that. And then uh, play it. Be happy with it or not. Make, ad make adjustments and then move on. Uh... Your mo so Papa Troll, 
One only question. Your current model is shown here look more detailed than those currently in the game. Just my impression, or will Ashton become more detailed? Uh, you are right in your impression, and maybe it's a little, uh, it's a little miss, uh, what's the word? Miss, um, represented? Just one second here. I gotta fix up some sloppy modeling. Um, so it looks more detailed because it is. Basically, I've put on more greebles. So if we look at... Let's do this. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little comparison here. So here's one that I did originally, which not a lot of people have seen because it's not in the game. It's right beside it. Um, but you can kind of... Actually, let me let me just show a better example. That one, That one's been done for a while, but it's not in the game. This one's in the game. Oops. And we'll just kind of look at it right beside it. So you can kind of see that, like, the detail is really just in the amount of object, like these little greebly things here, these uh, these little objects here. Um, there's more of those on them, but in terms of like mesh density, they're they're pretty much the same. So it's kind of it's kind of miss uh, what the hell? miss miss uh, not misrepresented, but it's it's not accurate. Uh, because you're not seeing it at scale. Um, so keep in mind, an astroneer is, is a very tiny um, so yeah. when, you see, when you see it in the game, it's going to look a lot a lot, a lot more uh, or a lot less detailed, just bigger in scale. Uh, Nemos. Uh, so I already saw the Voyager and Sputnik in the game. Will there be other things like Hubble or the ISS? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe, you there, maybe there is already. Let's say that. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, let me, let me do this so I don't spoil anything. Hang on a second. I got to load up another file. Unfortunately, you folks are going to have to get a load of this. Ah, uh, I'm going to load up a file and I'll let you know how many are in the game right now. Just one second. Uh, dash boom. Big fan. What's your vision for the biggest challenge players will have to face in the finished game? I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to wait. Uh, um, one. Uh, oh boy, hang on a second. How many are there? Oh my god. Okay, hang on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I'm trying to count. Oh, you can't see my. Okay, good. I don't want to spoil anything. Um. Uh, scene explorer. Okay. Oh, oh wait. No, that was right. Okay. Uh, there's one, two, three, four. Five, six. There's seven current historical probes that you can discover, and there's one, two, three, four, four more uh, that aren't in the game that we're just sort of sitting on until we want to put more. So there's there's a handful, and we'll do more. Yeah, definitely more. Uh, in one of the trailers, uh, there's a giant printer making giant tanks. When are we gonna oh, get yeah, those? Yeah. Wait, is there? Yeah, the the uh, the original trailer. Oh, that printer. Yeah. yeah. So that that's coming. That that stuff is in the game in a sense, right? Like that tank was, I think, a refinery at the time in that one trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yeah, the printer was is basically just the the building printer that exists. It just looks different. And the scales changed a bit, but yeah, that that stuff was just it's been iterated on, right? Like it just changes. Um, the UX kind of. And design shifts and then that then the art shifts with it and yeah uh man too many questions uh modeling question are the plants modeled manually or by an algorithm uh let me show you how about that i'll take a quick little break little detour break here uh, desktop, go Unreal, let's load up, uh, let's load up the Terran planet, the one that you, everybody starts on. Uh, so the answer is they are not hand modeled. 
Um, there are handcrafted elements to it, but they are, for lack of a better word, procedurally generated. Um, so the biomes are generated. The way at which uh, the game puts them together is procedurally generated. Um, but the list of things that the biomes have to choose from are handcrafted by me. Uh, the individual assets are handcrafted by me. Uh, the color palettes are chosen by me. Um, but every planet, when a planet gets generated, it's got the planet. Then it goes, okay, I've got four biomes to choose from, at least. Uh, I'm going to pick two, and I'm going to put them together. So then it goes and puts those, th those biomes together. And then the biomes themselves go, okay, I've got a color palette to choose. To choose. It'll pick one of four that I've, that I've made. It'll go and put the colors on it. Then it's going to go and put all the decorators on it. Uh, so, for instance, if I want a really common decorator, I might have a list of seven collections that I can choose from. It'll pick, like, two. Uh, then it'll go up and go, okay, what are some more un uncommon things I want it to see? It'll have, like, a list of five or six to choose from. It'll pick one or two. Then it'll do it again for rare items, then again for the discoveries, and so on and so on and so on. So every time it does those mixes, it's going to be different, and it puts them together. But there's still some curation that goes on in there. Uh, so, for instance, if we zoom out. Oh, that's too far. Uh, uh, where are we here? Player start. So I will generate this planet. Just takes a little bit of time. So this is. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That's cool. Um. So this is a biome that's chosen a uh, color palette that has the blues and purples in it. Uh, this is like a mountain biome that we put together uh, again over there. And if I fly out really quickly, uh, now you can see here, there's two different biomes that it's chosen. So we've got the purples and the blues and the sort of browns and the purples as well as the mountains. Um, but th with this planet, when it generated, it would have had about four biomes to choose from. Each one of those biomes has multiple choices to go from. Uh, so now if I hit, uh, keep this in mind blues and purples browns things like that we'll hit rebuild um, and uh, it'll generate another one. Oh, of course it nice. chooses the same ones it look, making me look like an ass hang on a second here <laughs> uh, so the things, yeah so the thing there we go so now we've got some greens and stuff <laughs> like that so the thing that doesn't change is the sky color uh, maybe that'll change uh, in the future um, and yeah, so it chooses these plants, the plants to put down. Um, it'll put those down, and uh, it's not going to be the same plants every time, even though you're in the same biome. It's just that that particular biome has a certain subset of stuff to choose from that won't be in another biome. Uh, yeah, so that's how. And then I can just sort of hit play, and I can run around, and that's how uh, that stuff gets done. Cool. Uh, what are the thrusters you find used for? You can just play around with them. You can throw hydrazine in them. Um, connect, connect them to things. It's again like a little tease of what, what could become. Look at this. Uh, and so, so, what are these so. things floating in the. Look at that rock up there. It's funny. Okay, back to modeling because I want to get this done. Uh, oh, this is a weird one. Um, can you explain side chaining in, in simple terms, please? Uh, not in simple terms. So, side chaining is a audio term it's basically oh man i'm trying to think of like a quick paragraph way to describe it um so you can take an eq which is, uh, and side chain it to a compressor so a compressor uh, squashes down the dynamic range of audio which also lifts up the quiet stuff to match more the, the louder stuff so that's the compressor an eq is the equalizer that um take certain frequencies and either re basically removes them from the signal. So a side chaining could be where you have an EQ that only grabs the high frequencies and sends it through a compressor so that then it goes back into the main mix where um, where those where those specific frequencies are compressed rather than the whole thing. So a practical term, like use of that would be on a vocal track that has a lot of silver and syllabants is like the uh, S's and like hisses and like some people just talk with a lot of S in their voice. And so you could sidechain an EQ and a compressor to get rid of all that. And that's called a de -esser. So yeah, 
that is my like quick thing. Uh, Horny97, do you prefer working at a small div or a larger AAA company? Uh, Adam, you want to take that one first? Uh, small. I mean, I prefer working for a company I own. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, small company. Uh, my first my first job in the industry was at a small team. There was only seven of us. Uh, I loved it to death. I, w- I moved on to Relic, which had 200 people. Um, and uh, I enjoyed it there, but uh, it was a little big. Uh, and then uh, eventually landing at uh, Rel- or at Ubisoft, which I think the last game I worked on had like almost a thousand people that worked on it. Um, so uh, um, I prefer, I definitely one hundred and ten percent prefer uh, uh, small um, small teams. Yeah, same. Uh, Hungry Hobbit, did anybody get killed by the this worm with a red light? Um, Right now, yeah, it, they're they're pretty easy to avoid. It used to be there was actually like fifty in a little like in our little room, so they're a little bit more of a challenge. Um, so I guess to answer your question, yeah, so I got that's not really. Um, we actually had to remove a bunch of them because it was they were they weren't really that nice as far as uh, performance goes. So they got minimized to like a, only a couple. So their distributions got changed, and maybe. Maybe we can clean them up and have a lot of them so that they're a little bit more of a challenge to deal with. Uh, Shadow Zeno. Uh, wingsuits or parachutes? That sounds... So, maybe. Uh, uh, will there be more complex crafting and print three different pieces to build a certain thing or smelt two different ores uh, together to get one ore? Um, that, I think that was talked about at some point. I think Brennan... And I had a chat about it once. Um, the complex is not always the best thing, though. Like we we always strive for. And I'm speaking for Jacob, and so I won't talk too much about it. But um, there's obviously a difference between being complex and having more depth. And complexity isn't always the best thing, right? Like sometimes it's just easier to and better for the player to just throw in a couple compound instead of like compound one resin and one lithium right like that creates these unfun things to deal with sometimes as a player but i so i don't yeah i, I probably talk, spent too much time talking about that when it's not even my thing uh yeah we talked about water it's a possibility it'd be cool uh any plans for discovering objects that you can fit together to build something bigger or custom or build something that operates depending on the parts used. Uh, maybe? That sounds cool, though. Uh, I'm about to put this thing in the game. Let's do it. I just need to remember what the hell I called it. Discovery, Station Wreck. Oh, okay, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Endermaken, do you know that you can still get in a chair and pick it up at the same time? Yep, we know. <laughs> And it's really funny, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I'm not sure if there's a fix for it now or not. But uh, yeah. There, there is. It's in the next patch. Point. Okay, that's the next patch. Mm-hmm. So, pick up chairs while you can, guys. Uh, every time I load a new game, will the planet be different or the same? Well, technically, as as Adam showed just uh, ten minutes ago, the planet will not change, but the biomes will. Uh, I don't know if that ever that there's been. I, I know Jacob has mentioned before that be like th- is thinking about maybe you you can s- start a new planet after you've discovered them uh, when you re-roll again. But who knows? Oh man, there's too many questions. Oh yeah, station. Oh, that's the, hmm. that's the blueprint. Where's the? Oh wait, that's the mesh. Where's the... Find? Wreck station. Oh, what the frig? Um... Okay, hang on. Wreck station 02. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's in there. Uh, but the file name is awful, so I'm just gonna call it TA. Station 3A, file export, export selected, 3A, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, export, export.
output selected. How about the right folder? Three A. Export. Yes. Save. Import. <laughs> Evil Bob Sauce, are you aware that if you go into space on foot, you get landstorms in space? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, That's a bug. They're not landstorms in space, they're space storms in space. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually something astronauts orbiting in the IS have to deal with all the time. Yeah, those nasty those nasty rainstorms on the space station are that they also like get really dusty and throw rocks in space. Okay. Okay, I just imported this. First, why don't we just go ahead and look at it from a scale thing? So where the hell's my spawn? Here it is. Uh so I'm gonna drag it in here all nice and gray so we can get a kind of sense of scale. Oh, let's pretend it's like, oh, it's off in the distance. Oh, I just discovered it. I'm such a good little astroneer. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Look at that. Look at that hunk of, hunk of metal. Ooh. Hello. All right. Yeah, look at that. That's a cool silhouette. That's what I like to see. Get out of here. I'm like, oh my god. What's this giant wrecked thing over here? Jump over this rock. Get out of here, rock. Ha! <laughs> it's got grass growing on it. It's been here for so long. <laughs> it's it's growing moss. And then I'm gonna be like, uh da, 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 da. looking for stuff. Where's all the stuff at? Oh, look, there's a door I can go inside. Oh, shit. I'm going to die. Okay, go down. I kind of feel like it needs to be bigger. And then I'll pluck whatever juicy morsels it has for me out of it, and then I'll get out of here. Man, look at that. I actually kind of like the grass growing on it. Uh, the reason it's doing, uh, if you guys are watching, it's because I placed it. This is getting really technical. I placed it as a static mesh uh, in the game, not as a... Uh, not as a uh, decorator, so it doesn't have the grass growing on it. But uh, that's what happened. Anyway, so I kind of want it to be. Let's let's just let's just do this. Let's see. You guys can help me make a decision. There's OG scale. I'm gonna duplicate over here. No, hang on, hang on a second. I'm gonna duplicate it over here, and we're gonna go. Uh, I don't know, bigger. Now let's hit play. All right, I'm exploring space. I've come across this distant planet, distant planet. Where's the OG one? Is that the OG one? That's the OG one. Where's the big guy? Oh, there's the big guy. Oh, we gotta do bigger. Yeah, I like the big one. It's huge. Run, run, run. That's pretty big. This is this is gigantic. Look at that. All right, now now test the collision. Though I'm curious, like how oh, I, I haven't it... I haven't done any collision on it. I'm just gonna look at it. Oh, oh, zero collision. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk right through it. Um. Now I'm gonna. Oh god, the people are gonna kill me for doing this. They're gonna be like, why can't we do it? And then Jacob's gonna get all these texts, and he's gonna be mad. But oh, hang on, spawn object. I'm about to die. Filter, filter, filter. Oh, yeah, that's sweet, sweet oxygen. Uh, free power, invincible. Giant deform tool that goes really fast. Oh, yeah, dude, I got to go bigger on this guy. Yeah, this I got to go this size. This is nice. Or somewhere in between. Yeah, I like okay. that. Well, I, I'm no artist or anything, but maybe maybe not all black. Uh, it's charcoal because it burned up in the sky, even though the damage is totally burned all the paint off. Yeah, even though it's totally unrealistic. Says so, Dev, why can't we use hacks? Because we need you to play the game and test that. 
we'll do we'll do hacks I'm sure at some point but these are just dev dev stuff dev hacks all right I gotta find a happy spot in between the two scales um, but I'm gonna do that on the export so let's take this guy oh shit let's take this guy and all of this stuff not the astroneer where is he there he is or I say he but where are they uh, and then scale a little bit bigger and control oh I can't do that no oh wait yes I can <laughs> grab that grab that grab that grab that grab that scale scale it by let's say let's just say 20% mm, let's say 225% okay that's big enough done take this Center, center, center. Oh shit. Uh, did I? Please tell me there's a Okay, there we go. Very good. Uh, center, center, center. File, export. Export, save, selected. File, export, export, save, selected. Ba -ba -ba. What the hell did I call it? Discovery train wreck of three. Oh, wait. What? File, export, export, selected. FBX. Okay. Okay. Get that going. That's in there. Uh, re import. Those guys got bigger. That's great. I'm going to hide them both. That actually looks like it's an old pirate ship or something like that. That's kind of funny. Um, okay. Riley, are you there? Y yes, I am. Let's uh, let's end the stream because I'm going to color it and do all that stuff, and then that'll give me something to like, share in a screenshot Saturday or something like that. Sweet. It's before suspense. Uh, okay. Well, well, before we end, uh, Xbox and PC are getting updated very soon. Yes. Uh... Yeah, we're work, still working hard on performance, um, multiplayer issues, save game issues. Yeah, just, uh, if you have major issues, send them our way. Send if, save game issues. Um, gosh, what else? House, housekeeping. Uh, yeah, uh, just remember, be patient. It's only a six-person team right now. We're in early access. I mean, we just, I mean, we're only twenty-one days into early access, so there's. There's a whole heck of a lot more to do mm -hmm. as far as performance, mm -hmm. optimizing the game, mm -hmm. making more content, making more features. Mm -hmm. It all will come in time. Mm -hmm. uh, just keep being an awesome community. Uh, be cool to each other. And uh, yeah, that's that's all I had to throw out. Yeah, that was it, man. We are pre-alpha, so expect changes to go. Uh, if you guys get broken, please don't be upset. Just share that information with us so that we have the right information to fix it. Uh, and if you see people posting on the forums that are, uh, you know, they're sharing stuff that doesn't have a lot of information, maybe you could ask them to do the same thing so that we could help out or we could help each other out. I uh, appreciate it so much for watching. Uh, please tweet at Astroneer Game or at Adam Bromel uh, Yvarius if you can drop links in the, in the chat. That'd be amazing. Uh, let us know how the stream went because this is the first time we've done like actual like hard development stuff from a content side. You guys have seen me make worlds before, but that's kind of fun and that it's it's more gamey. Uh, this has like been straight development of just me pushing polys, which I thought was going to be boring. Uh, if you guys liked it, uh, we can always do this again. Uh, for Riley, myself, the rest of System Era, thank you so much for watching, everybody, and uh, we will be back soon. Adios. Right. Cheers, guys. See. You.